said, hey. welcome to today's session of the Rising Hand. Um, who wants to do the recap for last week? Sorry, I was muted. I was pulling up my notes. Okay. Um, I only really have what our group did. Alexa, did you want to do the tower group again? Um, if I can recall. Okay, because I don't remember what everybody else did. Um. So it looks like, if I remember correctly, um, me and Cor. Kor and Kalora went to go check out the house last week, and Kalora found where the hatch was as a spider. Um, a big spider. Yeah. Yep. She used um, locate object, and she gave us like a rundown of what everything looked like. And then we headed back to the house and um, talked about what we were going to do. I know that Brad, Tito, and Logan also did like the underground stuff. I don't know if you guys want to expand on that more, but I remember you guys did that as well. That's most of what I have, the, the gist of what I have. I stood behind a banner. Not very well, because Hedry and Azaf could see me, and then I hit it better after that. Indeed. And to found on the group going underground, they uh, went to a part of the Dwarven Quarter that we had not yet explored, uh, and found an area where they saw seven or eight dwarves going into one house that was far too small for that many dwarves to fit in it. They went down a ladder in said house and found a somewhat... Uh, massive grow area of mushrooms and root vegetables um, heading northwards towards the uh, human elven district they continued further and came upon a wall that had a uh, semicircular grate coming out of it uh, that looked to lead further into another chamber that's what they did and then at the end of the session you guys all came back together with the exception of Lex who is still at the tower um, to talk about the plan. So we can either pick up after you guys have talked about the plan, or if you guys still want to talk about the plan, we can do that now. And Hezrian and Zaffir battled um, yes. some things in the tower that apparently is a thing. They fought some creatures in the Proving Ground. I will assume that you guys have talked about the plan, and we will pick up with Lex at the tower. So, Lex, you have been here for a few hours now, hiding behind this, uh, and that's after Zaffir and Hezrian have left, hiding behind this banner. Starting to get late. No movement that you can ascertain. Go ahead and make a perception check for me. Alrighty. I'll try not to be trash. Da, 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 da. Perception. Okay. <sighs> Shit. Okay, I see it. It's a 12 plus 7, so 19. 19. Okay. Over the course of this evening. How are you staying here all night if you have to? Um I I think so. Okay. Sure. I know I know. I know what I'm risking. Over the course of this evening you hear almost nothing. There's the tower seems to be sleeping to a certain extent. At one point 
you hear kind of scuttling or all, all on the floor in front of you and you look kind of just peering around the banner and see a rat scurrying away into one of the portals. Which portal? The portal to the library. Didn't look like a normal rat. Uh, make a nature check. Oh shit, okay. I don't think I got plus anything on nature. I'm really good at 12s, so 12. Wow. 12. <laughs> it looks like a very normal rat. A little bit dirty, um, maybe had like a scab or something on its back, but definitely looks like a rat. Had I seen any, I haven't seen any rats around the tower before of the multiple times I've been in here. Nope. You haven't really been around at night other than when you guys slept here that one time, but you haven't seen it during the day, any rats or anything. I guess I'll st stay and wait for it to come back out. Okay. Continue waiting another hour. Don't see the rat coming back out of the, the room at all. Um, you do almost think that you hear a sound coming from uh, one of the portals, the portal to Overdell's room, but you can't really make out what it is. It just kind of sounds like it's hard to say, like nails on a on a floor, like someone dropped something, or ah, you can't really make it out. Or what? Sorry. Like nails on a floor, like uh, something was dropped, a few nails, or. It's hard to describe. It it almost just sounds like sc scratching mixed with tapping. All right, I'm gonna um, come down from my hiding spot, okay. and I'm gonna stealthily, if possible, um, go into Ovidel's room. I don't know how the portal sounds when you go through it. Uh, there's no sound in the portal when you go through it. Um, it's just a cold black feeling. Okay, yeah. cloak up. Come to think of it, you haven't really heard any sounds coming from these portals before, even when uh, class was in session in Atsuor's room. Ooh, that's a little weird to begin with. But when you go in, hood up, go ahead and make a perception check in the dark room. Looking around, everything looks just about the same as it did when you were in here earlier yesterday. Um, the only thing of interest is uh, the dog is still here. In Ovidel's room? Sorry, did I say Ovidel? No. Yeah, you said Ovidel's room. This was Nesavera? Yeah. yeah. Or Nefreya, whatever. I don't I get the names mixed up, but I know who no, I'm talking about. Human woman's room, right? It was the N. Nestrea. Nestrea. Yeah, that's who it was. Nestrea's room. Sorry, that's the room the sound came from. It looks about the same. The dog is still here. Um, he looks up at you and kind of cocks his head and then scratches against the barrier that has him in place and then it clicks. That's the sound. It's the sound of his fingernails on the barrier. And then I don't notice like anything out of place, nothing. No. But the dog is acting up though. And I don't see any rats that somehow snuck through. Do you want to like look around the room and try to investigate? Yes, yes. Okay. Go ahead and make an investigation check. Investigation is hmm, not as bad as I thought. 16. 16. Uh, looking around, kind of getting behind some of the, the desks and uh, bookshelves in the room, you kind of peer and don't see any rats. Um, no rat droppings either. 
no sense of anybody's been in there. Not that you could tell. All right. Then I will leave. Um, and because my curiosity is peaked, I'm going to go to whose room did I see all the stuff in before? Uh, was it Ovidel's room? I think it was. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to figure it out. Okay. What stuff are you looking for? Um, who's room six? Six? Yeah. Baronin's room is six. I'm going to go to Baronin's room. Okay. So I stealthily sneak out and then go to the other one. Do I need to make another stealth check? Yeah, go for it. Uh, 29. 29. Yes, you somewhat invisibly uh, sneak through the shadows in the main chamber and into Baronin's classroom, which is likewise very dark. Um, looking around, it looks like, again, just about the same as it did when you were here earlier, but go ahead and make a perception check. I see nothing. That one. Plus that seven. One. <laughs> yeah, you are absolutely confident that nothing has changed in this room since you walked in. This room looks good. Yep. We're fine. So, I'm gonna go right back on out. Okay. Um, what time would you, do you think it is? Uh, like point? three. Okay. Um, then I will go back up to my spot, but I'll have to climb up there this time. Okay. Go ahead and make an acrobatics check to get up there. Mm-hmm. Pretty low acrobatics. DC. Don't be surprised what I can roll. <laughs> Just kidding. 21. 21. Yeah, easily enough. You find, uh, as you, you kind of stealthily almost jog up to it, but in a very fluid and silent motion, and put your toes in a small crack in the stone and just launch yourself upwards, catching and then pulling up the rest of the way. Go ahead and make another stealth check to hide. Uh, 28. 28. Okay. Um, another three hours goes by before you hear out of one of the portals in this main chamber with you, the sound of two or three sets of footsteps. Do you peek in my head out? Do I see anybody? Yes, it is a group of four students heading to the library. Do I realize that it's, you know, 6 a.m. You and have people are... mind, so you yeah, I mean, exactly I'm, I'm, when it is. Sorry, I was going to say, I realize it's 6 a.m., so school is starting. Yes, you do. <laughs> okay. You kind of just go, oh. Yeah, that's why I'm hearing things now. People are awake. And I'm probably feeling exhausted right about now. Oh, yeah. Uh, you do have a point of exhaustion. All right. Now so I'm going to get down from my spot, which I know will probably... Well, that, that's another check. No, I didn't no, make a be check fine. before. Okay. Um, and I am going to... Uh, Go up to Veronin's room. His study? Yep. Okay. So you walk into the uh, the library and head into the transportation chamber, mm -hmm. pressing the button that has been illuminated for you for Veronin's room, and you rock it upwards and come to his chamber door, opening it. Veronin is not yet inside the chamber. Do you mm -hmm. wait like he told you to do? Or... I'll wait. Okay. Uh, three minutes goes by before uh, Baronin exits from the same door you did, entering the room from the transportation chamber. Ah, Max. Good morning. <sighs> yep, it's it's morning. Um, so I did stay here all night, not Indeed. very comfortably behind something. Um, I didn't really notice anything as much um i definitely checked out your room make sure see um because i heard noises but i think it was the dog um ah. 
Does he usually scratch? Uh, you might just uh, ask its owner. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Huh. Australia would know. Uh, she has trained him since he was a, a young pup. Does she have class today? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Do you know where I could find her if I needed to? Uh, she will likely be in uh, the library at some point today. I can send her a message a bit later and have you have her meet you somewhere if you like. Okay, yeah, that's uh, perfect, actually. Um, yeah, yeah, but where would I be? You know, I can just come back here later today, maybe like um, five o'clock. Five o'clock? Yeah, if it changes, I'll just let you know. All right, easy enough. I will send her a message as soon as she's awake. So yeah, nothing really happened last night. I mean, on a whim, obviously the one night I'd stay, you know, who knows? The odds were against me, but it could have happened. Well, thank you for your vigilance, nonetheless. Also, do you have anything that can make me a little less tired? Because I don't know what my friends are getting up to today, but they might need me. Ah, of course. Um, he goes behind his desk and pulls out a uh, a vial of uh, semi-translucent liquid. It's blue and has white swirls running throughout it. Uh, try that. Down it. Restorative. Oh, all right. Um, he you he watches as you swallow it and kind of just has a passive smiling look on his face. Um, as you drink the liquid, it almost tastes of. Uh, of berries, but has a very tart uh, aftertaste that uh, blossoms in your throat and then comes up through your tongue, making you salivate. Um, as it settles in your stomach, you get a warm feeling kind of starts from there and radiates outwards, and all of a sudden you're not tired anymore. I need to keep this stuff with me all the time. <laughs> what was it? Quite difficult to repair, but it has restorative qualities. Did you make this? No, that was made by fuck. Um, let me look at the potion. Isn't Eluhurad? Yeah, it was made by Eluhurad, I believe. Yeah. No, Eluhurad made it. Um, one of his uh, second year classes uh, make this potion every year. Hmm. Nice. Um, thank you for this again. Um, of course. Uh, you did what you did in service of the school, and that can be rewarded. Thanks. Well, I guess I'm going to go. Well, I guess I'm just going to go. But if I can help, I'm going to try and help you out more if I can. But right now i got to see what's going on with them. I understand. Other pressing matters. All right. So I exit out. And then, Matt, is your phone available or should I do whisper through? Whisper, please. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, how do I do whisper again? I'm trying to remember the G uh, slash W G M, and then message. Ah, there we go. I didn't get anything. I sent it. Refresh. Ah, there we go. Sure. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, rest of the group. You spent uh, some time before you all went to bed uh, discussing the plan, what you were going to do uh, when you finally break into the Calamest house and finish your contract for the Thieves Guild. Then you all break apart and decide to 
what? Do you go to bed? Do you have anything you'd like to do after discussing your plan? I'm good to go to bed. Okay. Me too. Yeah, I was gonna get some sleep. Yeah, I was gonna get some sleep too. Okay. What time is it, Matt? Uh, probably around after you get done talking, ten o'clock, eleven. Getting late. Are we? Are we doing the heist tomorrow night? Well, that's up to you guys. What did you decide? Well, I thought we were doing it in like the day. I think the plan is to do it during the day because there's less guards. Yeah. Okay. I didn't remember that part. Then yeah, I'll go to bed. Okay. You guys all go to bed enjoying a fitful night's sleep. Um, a lot on your minds given what you have to do tomorrow. You wake up the next morning feeling uh, as refreshed as you could be given the circumstances. It's probably around seven. The day is yours. What would you like to do? I go downstairs. Same. Uh, get some breakfast. Same. <laughs> okay. breakfast. Um, can I stop uh, Hezrian before he leaves? Mm -hmm. um, I just thought that maybe this would suit you better today. And I'm just going to put my uh, hand on his shoulder and uh, give him plus one to AC, turning his armor grass. Very cool. Uh, very fine. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be an interesting day today for sure. Yeah, I think I'm going to go to the tower and see if I can get some spell components that I need, just in case it is useful later. Yeah, what are you gonna get? I think I need to have like a jeweled horn or like a magnifying glass or something. So. Okay. Let's see what they have. All right, solid. Yeah, man. Wish me luck on this. Uh, this uh, thing we're doing. Oh well, I'm going to eat breakfast first, so we can go downstairs. Okay, cool. But so I guess we go downstairs. Yep. Get some breakfast. Is anybody specifically not going step downstairs to get breakfast in the morning? Okay. So you guys all sync up downstairs. Uh, grab a table. And Cosmo starts bringing out food. He just brings family-style dishes at this point. He's used to you guys eating a lot of breakfast and kind of knows what you like by now. He brings plates full of eggs and potato hash, uh, along with freshly baked bread and butter. Um, brings a flagon of water and also, to those of you who drink coffee or tea, brings those to you as desired. Um, you guys basically have the the place to yourself right now, being this early, with the uh, exception of Cosmoros, who also, um, as he's bringing out your breakfast, uh, brings over a small flask um, and just kind of puts it on the table. It's wrapped in a an, a dirty cloth, and he says, uh, "There's the uh, the oil you wanted. Sorry, I couldn't find it last night." Thank you. guys doing it today or that's the plan we're not doing anything <clears throat> anytime wink right well good luck i'm gonna <laughs> get in the back and stop do you, do you use the oil directly on hinges when you yeah just put them on the rag and then wipe it on okay He leaves you guys to your to your breakfast. Hey, so what time you guys think we're gonna do this then? Uh, what time is it now, man? Uh, it's seven. 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 Okay. Core. But if she goes out to the neighbor's house, um, what's her name? Let's see. 
Sonia? You're a little bit hard what? to hear, Mary. Sorry, I'll plug in my head. Yeah, I can't hear you. You're muted. You're muted. Do you think we should try and do it when Tifania goes out for uh, the day? It was at 3 o'clock when she went to the other house. I mean, we have no idea if that's reoccurring, but it's the only thing we have to go on right now, I guess. Well, they could go up in the bell tower again. Huh? Or I could go up there. Me and um, Brad could go up to the bell tower. Okay. We are. Um, it would be unusual for us to be in there. I kind of wanted to go back into the uh, Temple of Bill Mater anyway. Yeah, I'll probably join you to keep watch while they're doing things. You could just come in with us and, and yeah. ask to go up to the bell tower. I mean, I don't think we have to sneak in. It's yeah, I think it should be fun. Pretty nice place. Sounds good to me. Okay, so you guys are going to stay there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was planning on going to class. Okay. I was planning on going to the class. Uh, but, um, I'm also going to see if I can get components for the spell that we talked about in case we decide that might be usable. I just, I just don't want to miss out on when it happens, you know? Even if I'm far away from it happening. Well, I guess we'll all go to the bell tower and wait. I mean, that might be kind of obvious looking, a whole bunch of people. So I should come to bell tower after class? I was just saying I was going to go to the bell tower when we actually do the thing to watch over. I didn't I'm not saying I'm going to be there all day. Yeah, I think uh, on Overwatch. Well. It's going to come to class with me. I mean, I guess we should verify that um, maybe Owen has left for the day. No? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. How do, how do you want to, should, I mean, do you want us to go scout it out now? I mean, I guess. Well, what, isn't he work in Parliament? Mm -hmm. So we could just go to Parliament and ask for him. Say, hey, I have a, I want to see my representative. I don't know if we should I don't know contact him directly, it. just in case it ever ties back to us. Maybe just see if he has an assistant, or just ask around, see if he's shown up for work yet? I don't know. Almost anything would be conspicuous at this point. I mean, if you guys are just thinking I should just go in, then I can just go in any time. It doesn't matter. But it's after class. I mean, do you feel like you could go in unseen? I know I can go in unseen. I don't know if you guys can go in unseen. Yeah, no, I can't. I'm very, like, clunky and my armor makes all the noise. Well, and just don't forget that when I'm in there, I can only talk to you if you're in 30 feet of me. So, we're virtually going to be silent. I mean, I could use... Oh, yeah, because when you are... Are you going to be an animal? And I don't have any other ways of communicating besides that. So... Even if I wasn't an animal. So if you guys are just telling me to go in, I will go in. But after class, I no. want to be close. This man's education. I mean, sure, we can wait till after class. What time is your class over? <laughs> I don't know. It starts at nine. <laughs> 
do you have any way of letting us know? Uh, I can go with, I can go with him, and I have calling that I can use to talk to you. Just to let somebody okay. know what time he's going to be done. I mean, I mean, I can always go ask right now and come back. Sure. Okay. I'm done with my breakfast. I'm just going to go anyways. I think you need somebody in there, Kamora, to communicate with. I, I don't think you should go in solo with no way to communicate to anybody. Well, what's the other option? I don't know. Do you not have Colin? Sending? No. I do not. Sending, yeah, that's what I mean. Okay. Okay, Matt, I'm going to leave and I'll, I'll be back. I'm going to go to the tower and find out what class, what time class is, or start that process. I think you're muted, Matt. Okay. <laughs> Zaffer, you're going with him? Yeah, I was going to the class for uh, doing camping anyway. Okay. And I believe enchanting class started at three with Coronan. No, then I'm not going to that. Okay. So, Cor, what class were you going to? I forgot. Alu Harads at yeah, 9 a.m. Yeah. Okay. Main floor, bottom floor, second door. Perfect. So, you guys begin heading over to the tower after finishing your breakfast. The rest of you, you're going to. The cock, the church, is that right? No, we're not going anywhere. We're waiting till Core comes back. Yeah, I'm not doing anything. Okay. Just to find out when his class is. Gotcha. I'm All right. just chilling, playing. My room. I'm just gonna go to my room and meditate. I think. The bar or wherever I was eating. Okay, sounds good. So chords after you guys make your way north towards the tower, eventually arriving at your destination. Uh. You come into the main chamber where uh, nobody's currently present, being that you got here after the first class started. Um, oh, good. All right. So, hey, uh, can I see real quick? Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to tell you, um, I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm going to just go back up to my room and read the enchanting book that I got in the book about enchanting. Cool. Make an intelligence check as you get through it as well, and just whisper me the uh, results. Yep. You guys arrive in the central chamber where you are alone. Where would you like to go? What are you doing? Uh, I'm going to go. What class are you going to, Core? Elevator. And it said it would say his name. It said it would say his name on the elevator if he's available. Okay. Who? The blue red. Oh, okay. Perfect. All right. So you guys go into the library, and as you get there, you see uh, Lex sitting at one of the tables reading a book. Hello. Hmm. Oh, cool. I. Strange enough, I needed you. Me. Wow. Okay. Yeah. What's what up? Are you, what are you doing here? Uh, I'm gonna see what time class ends. He's here for class. Class? What are you? What are you doing? I, it's like seven fifteen. Class starts at like nine a.m. You know, so I'm just gonna see what time it ends, and then uh, report back to tell them what time class ends. Oh yeah, gotcha. Um. Type something to you, Matt, just quickly. Sure. Uh, da, 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 um... I'm also going to type to you what you've discovered so far because you've been reading for an hour. I'm going to type to myself. Okay. What's up, Nathan? 
Yeah, just giving me the total for your yep. chat flex. 29. Okay. Yeah, they uh, definitely are not aware of what that is. Cool. Melody rolled. I'm not, yep. It was public. Cool. Um, so I'm going to look up at Core. You speak with animals, don't you? Oh, yeah. I love it. You're good at it, aren't you? Yeah, I'm pretty good. As good as anybody. Okay. No, I can't speak to animals. But... I mean, as good yeah, as anybody. Easy. You just have to talk to them. What'd you say, Zappa? You just have to talk to them. And they respond? I mean, no, but you didn't say it. Convert, like, converse with animals. Okay, cool. You, you can con animals. You can converse with animals. Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna guess, Matt. It's only been it's been an hour, so two hours is usually study time, right? Yes. Okay. But I already sent you what you've learned so far oh. in the one hour. Okay, gotcha. Since there were extenuating circumstances. Gotcha. Um, hmm. actually, I think I'm good. And I'm just like, library, take this book back. Okay, as you hold it up, the book kind of begins to levitate and go back to its place on the shelf. Cool, we need to go speak with the dog. I'll let you ask whatever you need to ask, but we need to speak with the dog. Okay. I can speak to the dog. I get up and, and I um, just hope that core is after start moving. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go to the <laughs> library, to the elevator thing, I guess. Well, are you going to follow Lex or are you just going to go do your thing? Is, I, do you need to do this right now or after I ask the question? Actually, right now. Oh, okay. Who are you trying to talk to? A dog. Not you, Core. Elu Harad. I'm just gonna send a uh, calling, to, or not calling, sending to Elu Harad and say, "Hey, Elu Harad, Core is wondering what time your class is going to end today. The one that starts in two hours." Ah, all right. Um, the class is from nine to noon. Okay. Thank you. You send it again? Of course. It's... <laughs> no, oh. I just do that out of habit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Core, it's until uh, till noon that's when the class ends. Okay, okay. That's good. I'm assuming you were talking to him. When you... Uh -huh. uh, we were at... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I do. I was just joking. Uh... Well, it's good we came here anyways. I guess Lex needs me. All right, Lex, where is this dog? This way. And I mosey on towards uh, <clears throat> Brona's classroom? Nope. Yes. Nope. Nestrea's classroom. I said Nestrea. God, I'm so stupid. Okay, I know. Yep, that's the one. It's okay. I do the same thing, and I created these people. Yep. Um, you guys make your way back uh, through the portal into the main central chamber and over to uh, Nestrea's classroom. <laughs> Opening the door and entering, it is, or not opening the door, going through the portal and entering. Uh, the classroom is empty except for the dog up on the raised dais at the end of the room. Okay, cool. That's, that's the dog. That's the dog. Um, I need you to ask the dog if he saw anyone last night. If he saw uh, anyone last night. Aside from me. Okay. Uh, uh, hello. <laughs> oh God. I see you, dog. Hi. <laughs> How was your night? Good. Did you see anybody? He looks over at Lex and cocks his head. 
Anybody else? Uh, no, nobody. Um, do I have anything? Uh, do people give you rations? Do people give you this stuff? Bacon. Bacon. I don't what? have bacon, man. <laughs> Meat. What's he saying, Meat. Cole? Meat good. Uh, it's a very interesting conversation. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> uh, um, meat. I don't have any meat. Hey, do you have any meat on you? Uh, like. But what is he you saying? He literally said your rations have jerky in them. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, I'll give him the jerky. Hey, there you go, man. You try to put it your hand through the <laughs> portal that covers this thing, and the jerky just kind of mushes up against the uh, the oh, nice. barrier. <laughs> He licks the area where the, the jerky touched. Um, what is he in? <laughs> He's in a magical force field barrier that kind of protects him on the stage by himself. Okay, okay. But cool. What did he say? I'm just going to leave it right next to the portal. <laughs> he just looks at it and you can see saliva like dripping from his mouth. Uh, hopefully your friend comes by and gives it to you. Okay. Um, he said that, uh, nope, he just saw you. He saw nobody else. Nobody else, just you. Did he see something different than he usually sees? Okay, I'll ask him. Hey, dog, uh, what's your name? Uh, Baldo. <laughs> okay, Baldo. B A L D O, Baldo. <laughs> <laughs> Baldo, did you see anything uh, strange last night besides my friend here? Saw so, small dog. Small dog. No hair tail. No hair tail. <laughs> I see. I see. Um, anything smell funky? <laughs> no. Okay. Man, you're a good pup. I don't know if anybody tells you that. Tail starts wagging. <laughs> okay. Now I said you just saw a small, a tiny, uh, a, a tiny dog with a tail, probably like a rodent, some kind. Like a rat. I don't know. It's just a small dog with a tail. It was like that. He said naked, naked dog, something like that. He said no hair tail. No hair tail is what he said. Fuck. I should have followed the fucking rat. Of course it's a fucking rat. Ugh. Seems well, one of the stranger things I've done. Recently. Talk to animals, you talk to a squirrel all the time. Oh, yeah. But I mean, it's like a strange intel, you know. Well, basically, I was taken out here, and the only thing I really saw was a rat. And I was like, oh no, it's just a rat. But that might not be the case. But I'm also not really great with animals. So. Yeah. Mm. You should have, uh, I, I should have been watching. I could have talked to the rat. Fair point. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. Um, Your uh, thing's muted. Hey, Core, where is the place in here that I can get something for spells? I would know that. Yeah, you would. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't know. 497, the supply store. 97? Yep. It's 97. Okay, cool. I'm going to go there right now. If you guys want to come, you don't have to, but I'm going to go. I'll come with you. Why not? Uh, do you need me to talk to this dog anymore? 
Nope. That's it. Thank you. Okay. I can talk to any other animal you want. What dogs. kind of dog is it? He looks like a German Shepherd, but he's not a German Shepherd because there's no Germany in D&D. &D. This is a Shepherd. Yeah. It's a Shador Shepherd. Sure. It's a Shishi. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Do the supplies. Okay. I follow them. The dog kind of like turns his head and watches you leave, and then as soon as you guys get like ten feet away, he oh. just turns and stares at the jerky. I'll t I'll say bye, Baldo. I'll say bye, Baldo. Puts his paw up on the force field. Maybe we'll get to touch one day. Okay. <laughs> Cool. And you guys head into the uh, the what library. Are you saying to the dog? Into the, oh. Go to floor ninety seven. Yeah, you head to floor ninety seven. Uh, after the rush of uh, of air transports you up to the correct floor, you open the door into the very pungent and fragrant supply store with the halfling woman who mans the counter. She looks up at you all. Ah, early risers this morning. Hello. Yeah, we've got some really important stuff to do, so. What do you need? We have to figure out what time class was. Ah, always important. Um, do you know the spell, like, for um, clairvoyant, where you need, like, like, a magnifying glass that's pretty valuable? Hmm. Hmm. I believe I know that one. You need a magnifying glass. What's the uh, the value threshold yeah, on that? Much. It's pretty expensive, like a hundred gold. Hmm. Let me have a look in the back. Give me one moment. She turns around and goes through the curtain in the back. And you hear her rummaging around uh, for a few minutes before she comes out with a very small magnifying glass, about this big. Um. It's got a gold handle and gold around the outside and a small gem at the, the bottom where the bottom of the handle is. I'd say that's about 150 gold. Yeah, I mean, it looks really nice. Would it work? But, like, spell? I can't, like, owe you or something, right? Ah, uh, you have to pay up front. Sorry. Uh, Perhaps one of your lovely yeah, friends could spot you. It would work. No, we're all pretty broke, being from like a different time and all, you know. How much is it? 150 gold. That's a lot. Tito probably has it. I've got 100. Yeah, probably. Do you have anything you'd like to sell? We can, of course, well, I know take... it's here. We need to go back and talk to everyone. Oh, I've got a lot of stuff, but I don't think you want to buy, like, daggers and stuff, right? Indeed not. Prim primarily magical ingredients and uh, things of that sort. Ooh, have you ever seen this? We'll go a little bit left. It's, um, I call it Pataris Moss. Hmm. What are its properties? Um, healing. Can it be useful in the crafting of spells or unctions? Probably. I, I haven't. I've made a salve out of it once, and it helped. Well, I've never seen it before. I'd be interested in testing it out. How much do you want for it? 150. <laughs> <laughs> this one. Josh, can you meet your mic? Make me an offer. You're buying. Uh, I'll give you two gold for it. I am, I am muted. That's no. not worth it. It's, it's a no. healing stuff. That's super cheap. Yeah, I'll just keep it for that. Maybe I'll come back later for the magnifying glass. All right. Sounds good. Just let me know. I'll, I'll keep it aside for you. Um, Strange question. Of course. Do you have like a rat problem here? Can't say that I do. Uh, I've never had any problems with them getting into the stores or anything like that. They would eat up all our uh, uh, incense and things like that. Ingredients. Have that. 
So you haven't seen a single rat around here, right? Uh, can't say I've been looking. I don't leave just, this floor much. Just curious. Just saw a rat. Didn't know. Did you kill it? No, I didn't kill it. I well, you saw know, from afar. One, there are more. You should kill rats when you see them. Oh, yep, that's that's the next thing. I'm going to kill them. Yep. Thank you. All right. Anything else, or? Um. No. No. Okay. Well, I wish you a pleasant day. I uh, hope to see you later with uh, the money. Goodbye now. She kind of just waves, and turns back <laughs> around to what she was doing. All right. I guess um, I will go back with you guys for the time being. Hey, I might see if uh, Gisela has a potion of invisibility. On the way back. That's cool with you guys? Yeah. I'll go with you to Gisela's. Okay. I mean, I was assuming. I'd hoped you'd come with me. You don't know how we left things, but... Yeah, yeah I mean, it's on the way back, so... It's actually not, but that's fine. I'm not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, so you guys head to the West Bazaar. Yeah. And for the first time in a couple of days, make your way back to the Oceans of Potions stall, where Gisela is there, sitting behind the, uh, the area on a small stool. Um, all of her potions are arrayed out in front of her. She kind of stands up as uh, you guys approach. Two days left. How are we? Th how are we doing? Uh, doing pretty good. Uh, do you have a potion? I thought if you would give us some tips, you know. So you're the ones who've done all the research. Uh, you you have a potion of yeah, but you're the one who gave us the job. I'm not sure if we could do it. Indeed. Yes, I do have a potion of invisibility. How much is? Let me check. You just want standard invisibility or greater? Uh, standard is one hour. One hour, and you can't cast spells. Yeah. Um, and greater is. Uh, you can do things while you're invisible, and it doesn't break it. Uh, how much orange? Two hundred for the uh, standard invisibility. For greater invisibility, that would be. 800 gold. Mm. Uh, standard is fine. But here's the thing, Gieslin. I've only got 100. I could give you the 100 now. It's going to help us with the mission and give you the rest of it later. Don't you already owe me for stealing my first potion? Uh, collectively. But I, you know, I can guess I could try to sell some stuff, but I'm just saying, it would, uh, you know, I have been uh, good at completing tasks. You've been useful. I could do that. Go ahead and make a persuasion check. Minus one. Should bring me to ten. Ten. <sighs> For you, core, I could probably take it down to one hundred and fifty, but that's as low as I'll go. Just don't have it. I've got one hundred and eight, man. Shame. Um. Would you take some poison? 
What kind of poison? Uh, it is basic poison. It cost me 100 gold. That plus your 108, and I'll give you the uh, potion of invisibility. Sure. Okay. Take it. Okay. You hand over the 108 gold as well as uh, your poison. And yep. she hands you over a uh, small vial that uh, is full of a clear and iridescent liquid stoppered with a crystal uh, cork. Okay. It over. And that is all my money. And that's it. I'm ready to go, guys. Good luck. I mean, nobody else needs anything, right? You guys good? You guys good to go? Yep. Okay. okay. Let's go back. You guys head back to the Might Side end, uh, Inn, arriving at probably around 8. The rest of the group is either up in their rooms, if they've decided to be so, or uh, downstairs still, sitting at the table where you guys had breakfast. Oh, fuck. I'm hungry. Um, Cosmos, can I have some breakfast? Uh, sure, there's still plenty on the table where your friends are, if you walk over there. Yeah, I suppose there is. My bad, thank you. Of course. I'm gonna go to the table with my friends. Okay. And just start eating. Sure. Who's still down at the table? I was actually sitting outside. Oh, okay. So Cora was sitting outside before you guys yeah, arrived. I was still at the table as well. I would have waved. I'm gonna go up to Cora. Hey, Clara. Yeah? I got the potion. Uh, okay. What type of potion? Invisibility. Oh, okay. Where'd you get that from? I bought it from Gisa. Ew. <laughs> yeah, I know. Nobody likes her, but... Here, take it. Um, if you need it, you know, might be useful. Well, thank you, Cora, but I can cast invisibility. But can you cast it how many times? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll take it if you want to give it to me, but... Just in case. Just take it, okay? Okay. And then I'll go inside. Okay. Claire Bolden has re sitting at the table downstairs. I'll sit Tito down. is also sitting down, playing his lute. I'll sit down with them. Okay. Lex is there eating as well. So you guys kind of hang out for another hour or 45 minutes. So you have time to get back to the. Uh... Well, I I think um, I'll, I'll go outside and sit with Kalora for a bit. We'll okay. For a minute. Sure. Before Core left, I would have asked him what time his class was over. Yeah, he would have told you. His class is over at noon. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> You're. You're muted. I'm yeah, I was muted. Sorry, I told you. Cool. cool. I'm just Fair sitting point. out there like uh Oh playing with a stick and a rock. That sounds right. <laughs> yeah. I also would have told you that uh that I don't have to go to class today if you guys want to do it earlier. Well, I mean I think we have to talk to Tito and Hazrian because they're the two that are coming with me, supposedly. Yeah. Oh, hello, Tito. Did you come outside, Tito? <laughs> oh, I, was, I thought you said I was sitting there with him. No, you're sitting inside. They're sitting outside. Okay, never mind. I'm yeah, done. sorry. I'm... I, I messed up the order. Okay. We'll have to talk to them and see. Okay. Um, What you doing, by the way? <laughs> I'm playing with this stick and this rock. Here. Play with real stick. Ah, stick! Okay, I'm gonna go inside. Don't have too much fun, okay? I play with stick and rock and stick. <laughs> okay. Stick kind of holds the stick when you give it to him, and like almost like a sword, like yeah. Core does. <laughs> like, <laughs> I use my arm and fight him. Okay, you guys are, are playing battle stick. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys are still playing when Clarabold walks out to talk to you. 
Hi, Clara Bold. Ow! Ooh. <laughs> your your sun or your armor it the sun got in my eyes. It's very shiny. It's pretty nice. It's pretty. It could be a little cleaner, but uh, thanks. I appreciate that. What's up? Uh, you you seem pretty apprehensive earlier when we were basically saying you were gonna go in without by yourself without being able to talk to anybody. Um, well, I mean, I'm apprehensive about that, but apparently that's the only option. Um. I'm the only one that can get in, other than Tito. I mean, Tito can get in with me, but... Yeah, I just... I mean, I don't want you to go on a mission and not feel good about it. You know? Well, what am I supposed to do, Claire Bolt? I mean, maybe Tito goes in with you. Would you feel better if Tito was in with you? I mean, if Tito goes in with me, he'd have to be polymorphing himself, which would waste one of his spells. I don't know that that's right either, you know? It's just a spell. You can, uh, I mean, you can, I don't know. It, I, I don't think somebody should ever go in solo. I mean, it's not something that I want to do, but I understand that I have to. Now you don't have to do anything. Well, yes, we do. If we don't do this, then the author comes and kills us all. Hmm. I... Maybe. Right. So? <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. But right now our options are do this, flee and go fight a dragon, not do this, get killed by the author, or go insane because we're so far from home. So I guess I have to choose to do something. Yeah, well, we all have to choose to do something. But I, I still think you shouldn't go in solo. That's, especially if you're not confident, right? I'm confident that I can get in there. It's just everything else after that. Yeah, I mean, you've already gotten in once. Well, I've gotten into the house. I haven't gotten into the basement. That's true. So how does it work? Like, if you're a bug and you're taking in the oil, does it, like, shrink with you? Yeah, it kind of just magically absorbs to me, but once I um, get in there and I'm not a bug anymore, or I'm a bug, I've got to see, I guess, if I can find a crack to sneak through, and if I can't find a crack to sneak through, then I'm going to have to drop form, and I'm going to have to open the thing, and that could, you know, alert people to my presence. But Cor just gave me a potion of invisibility, so I can just drink that real quick. <laughs> yeah. So? I don't know. I just don't, I don't want you to feel like you have to do it. We still have time. But We have two days. I, it's plenty of time. What else are we going to find out? You know? I don't know. I don't know. Listen, it'll be fine. I'll go in and I'll get down there and then we'll figure it out from there. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't have any way to communicate with us? No, nope, not unless you're 30 feet near me. So I guess I'm hoping that I'll be able to get in there via a crack, and then once I get in there, I can come back out and tell you guys exactly where it is and exactly what it looks like, but I don't know. Well, look, if you get in there and you don't feel it's right... Message is 120 feet, right? 
real quick. Not 30. I don't have message. I've said that before. The cantrip? I, I do not have message. No, that was sending. I you do not message have message and I do I not have sending. The cantrip you used to no, she's just got the ability. Then to, what do you use to talk in everybody's head? The, the ability. I can telepathically right? speak. Because I'm confused. She's a ghostwise halfling. Okay, I'm just asking. You don't have to get mad at me. So yeah, I'm going in. All right. Well, look, we'll, I'll be at the church. Okay. So, anything goes wrong, I know it's not thirty feet. But just, just, just support the mission. Just get out. No big deal. All right. Like no, no sweat. I, I'll go. Uh, I'll go kill the author. It's no big deal. All right. Yep. I just, I just want to go home, Clarebold. So I'm gonna do what I have to do. Any blessings, do I? I don't have <laughs> I can do. Oh man. I can heal you. Oh, I'm good now. I slept. <laughs> okay. Oh, I can. Hmm. Well, all right. Well, all right. I, I guess, guess we're waiting rest. until Cor gets back from class. I don't. I don't know. We have to talk to Tito and Hezrian, I guess. Yeah. Do you think you would need any sort of? Uh... Let's see. I can't do anything. I can't do anything to help you. <laughs> I am so helpless. And I'm sorry, Kalora. It's okay, Kalora Bold. <laughs> so is the life of what was that? a druid. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, when you go in, if you're not out in, like, uh, a reasonable amount of time, oh, I'll just kick the door down. No big deal. What's a reasonable amount of time? I, I don't know. I'll... You'll know if I come and kick the door down, I guess. I don't know. I might be dead in a basement. Well. Mm. Let's hope not. Certainly hope not. Me too. Thanks, Clarabold. Yeah. I give him a hug around his knee. <laughs> I'll just pat her on the back. And I'll head back inside. I follow him in. You're muted. Okay, so you guys are all um, everybody who's at the table. Let's see. I brought Stick in with me too. I didn't leave him out there. Clarabold, Kalora, and Stick still holding his Stick sword. I'll walk in and head to the table where you guys are all sat. Are Tito and he Tito and Hezra in there? Yes. Hi. Emma. You're also there, Lex. Is that what you said? Yep. Eating breakfast. You look tired. No, I don't. I feel great. You got those, like, purple backs under your eyes. My skin is fucking blue. Yeah, it's a little bit darker. What do you mean? You I didn't I'm mean tired? to offend you. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're trying to say I'm tired. Yeah, that's what I said. You look a little tired. I take out my mirror. <laughs> <laughs> no, I fucking don't. Like, <laughs> okay, maybe I was just reading your body language wrong. Well, I took a potion that gave me all this energy. Mm. And maybe so it's just because you looked a little, little cracked out. Cracked out? No, it's not like that much. I'm not like the fucking squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, never mind. Um, where is everyone, by the way? 
Um, I think, I think Narfrin went up to his room. I think Logan went up to her room. Um, everybody else is here. I don't, I don't know where Zaffir is right now. All right, I'm gonna go get those bitches, and then I get up from um, the table and who is ever doors first. I don't know if it's Narfrin's or Logan's. Doesn't matter. Whichever one. Uh, Logan. <laughs> Logan. Uh, yes. I need you to come no, downstairs. Door. I need you to come downstairs. I'm gonna tell you guys something. All right. And I'm not gonna hide it. So let's go downstairs. Um. All right. I'm not walk downstairs. Then I go to Narfrin's door. Okay. Narfrin. I'll uh open the door. And a mid knock. Oh, um, can you come downstairs? Sure. I was just waiting for Core to get back. Oh, he's back. Um, Wonderful. Class ends at noon. Right at the table, yeah. Something that people wanted to know. Not entirely sure wasn't there for that conversation. Okay. I turn around and go downstairs. With this amount of energy that I have. Okay. Okay. So, and then I look around the room. Who's around? Who's in the inn? Just Cosmos? Yeah, just Cosmos. So. I am. Uh... Well, yes, Tito, you're in the inn. And Claire Bolt's back at the table. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, more in a hushed tone. Just so you guys know, I did do some research. There is a way to get you out of that contract. Um,. All what? I gotta do, all I gotta do is steal the paper and then destroy it. So simple yeah. enough. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just gotta have a good exit strategy. That's all that counts. It's part of a good plan. Well, how are you gonna steal it? Yeah. I'm just like looking at her, looking at myself, like. You can By me levitating. It's gonna be it's gonna be a pretty tough plan right there. Well, just letting you guys know, if you have an option B. So like you would steal it like by yourself. Oh no, I'm just saying like I can steal it this time because I can. Like I'm that contract thing with you guys, I'm not allowed to help you. Yeah. But just saying there's an alternative now in case guys don't want to go with that plan or if you guys are doing that me and some of the others can go try to take care of that if it looks iffy i'll get out of there Colora is just looking kind of like shocked right now how did you Thank find you this out me. reading R reading what the wonders of reading magical contracts book obviously are you sure that would work I feel pretty confident. Well, the only thing is, what happens with the Thieves' Guild once they figure out we've broken the contract, we've gotten rid of it, right? We'll deal with the repercussions as they come. The repercussions. I think we should just get rid of the problem and just do, do the... I could not hear you, Andrew. Uh, do, do, the, do the job? Yeah. I'm with T-Dub. Same. All right, do the job. But if your name remains on that contract, you know there's a way out. I mean, that's pretty useful information. I mean, just like for the future. Mm -hmm. Good work, Lex. That was like the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Like ever. Yeah, he is kind of an ass. Well, it's the morning. <laughs> I got. I, I'm in a happy mood of my music. Well, you're semi decent with that, so keep up the good work. All right, you all guys right. can go about your plan now that I've gathered you all. Logan just still just sits at the table. Um. So. 
I don't know. I don't know what to do now. Okay. Um. So when do we want to do this, Hezrian and Tito? You said it's best to do it during the day, right? Yeah. So just a suggestion. There's less guards during the day than at night. Okay. Yeah, I think the day would be best. And less guards means less problems, virtually. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go in there. Okay. I'm going to get back to that room. Okay. And then I guess I'm going to check to see if there's some way for me to get beyond the trap door. Okay. Well, do you want us to be there with you uh, when we open the trap door? How would you be there? Yeah. With the dimension door. But then people would see you, possibly. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we keep doing that. And then I guess... I mean, I guess if I can't get it open, or if I can't get in, then I'm, you guys are going to have to do that. So I'll have to come back out and tell you that. Okay. Okay. So then you come back out, tell us that, and then you tell us the, um, if you get in, hopefully you can get in. Um, you tell us the, where it is, I guess, and then dimension door in but I might be mistaken but um did we hear about the basement do we know where the basement is like isn't it like uh 10 feet below the front door or... it's about 50 feet down the, 50 the feet thing down. she got off the ring at least was 50 feet down 50 feet down and then like what was it like 25 like 10 feet? or 15 feet in front of the front door. okay gotcha gotcha yeah, so, I mean, the room is about 50 feet down in front of the front door, and then, like, 10, 15 feet in front of that front door. Yeah. I mean, I could try, we could try going in there pretty risky. Well, no idea. what's up? Doesn't Dimension Door, you have to see the, like, or at least be familiar with the location? know with dimension door you just uh, have to know the coordinates so with that being said like knowing the like 50 feet down okay and we're not it should work perf should work perfectly fine just knowing that yeah, well like, i mean if you can do that why aren't we just trying that yeah i'm sorry i thought i told it might have been out of the uh yeah that sounds like a good idea out of character i thought everybody knew out of character but well, sorry, I thought I told everybody in character as well. But yeah, we can do that. I'm sorry. My apologies. I thought you guys knew that. Yeah, I mean, I whoever you take, because Dimension Door, you can only take one other person then, right? So it'd yeah. have to be like a two man uh, project yeah. job. So um, I, mean, I, have, I have invisibility. So if you want, if, like, we could just go in. I put, I make us invisible immediately. Okay. And we get the ring and get out. I mean, do you guys honestly think there's going to be nothing in that basement? Oh, uh, no, I'm, I'm well, kind of counting there on there being something, something in the basement. That's kind of like, that's, that's why it's pretty risky to do it that way. Traps and all that, we, we have no idea. But then, like you said, we could do it. Um, we could go in front of the... Uh, in front of the trap door, but the risk of being seen. But could we uh, teleport there? Like Tito and I, could we go invisible and then do the mission door? But I mean, even though it's not going to be hella quiet, we'd still be invisible. So, oh, yeah, kind I of think a, good, that. a good chance ish. Well, invisibility would drop as soon as you used the dimension door amulet. Oh, okay, where yeah. I know that. Got you, got you. Okay, yeah. So I have a, I have a question. The way this spell works, Matt, like how it says on here on, I put I put it in roll twenty. So if they, let's say it's like off 
or, or if like the ring is just like stuffed into like a wall somewhere, if they go into that wall, do they actually go into it or the spell or does the spell just fail? Because it says like that at the bottom of the text that it fails if, you, if there's like an object there. So are they able to go into like em, uh, like solid space or would it just fail? Well, they would they would go into the solid space and take forty six force damage. Okay. So when they so when so would they just like start suffocating then? So what or? happens? I believe from reading the spell, and I was checking this earlier too, yeah. is you basically end up in that space, take the forty six, and then end up back where you started. Like it, it's like a fail safe. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Gotcha. So there's like no chance of them just being inside of a wall, I guess. Yeah, they can't. They're they're not going to suffocate inside of a wall. Okay, cool. That's just why I, I wanted to make sure that didn't happen. Yeah. I was thinking that too. I could turn into giant. I could just turn into a giant ape then and then break the wall. Right. Right. While you're suffocating. Oh. Well, um, well. So, if you guys are going to do that, then, I mean, I don't want anybody to be down there without help. Yeah. I mean, what do you think of the idea of you still going in there and kind of just being like a scout slash like support from above the basement door and like if you hear anything or something like that um like that's kind of like and then if you don't hear anything like after like a while maybe not after a while but like after you think we'd be done with the job you can leave if you if you're if you feel more comfortable doing that but like well the whole question is is how am i going to get downstairs there's some type of mechanism that we have to release i don't know if it's this is mary talking i don't know if it's a lock that we have to pick i don't know if it's a magical trap that we have to disarm there's something under a floorboard that we have to disengage unless there's some type of crack i can go under i don't think that's going to be the case though so me getting in the basement is more difficult than just saying I'm going to get in the basement. You know what yeah, I mean? I, I meant, like, you just chill at the top of the the door, like, where the trap door would be, and if you hear anything or something like that, then you could act upon that. And but that would be, it down would be a lot of space out of that. my range for talking to you. So I yeah. couldn't even, like, alert you to it. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody has, like, sending stones, right? They're not just, like, sitting on sending stones. If only. Well. So, when you do you guys want to do it? You guys have never stolen anything before in your life, have you? <laughs> this is very obvious. I mean, I've stolen something <laughs> from my grandpa. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm telling your grandfather because that's not cool. Um, you don't steal from the people close to you. It's okay. It was just some cookies. <laughs> <laughs> but still, there's a line. Wow. They were gross anyway. He's really old, and so they tasted like bran. Uh, raisin bran cookies. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. Well, so even act sweet. like you never had to stop before. You're very picky about cookies. Wow, you've had it easy. Okay. Excuse me? Oh. Oh, How do I, you know that I, I've had it easy? Chill. I was just picking on you about cookies. You're very judgmental. I I have an idea. What's up? <laughs> Why don't we just... Just... Dimension door, some people in right above, and we go get the shit, and then I just guy self as a guard, and I'd be like, "Hey, I'm just taking this guy out. He was an intruder." <laughs> no. 
Well, we got to decide on something. I agree. Also, Kalora, I wasn't being bitchy towards you. I was literally poking fun. I know I'm a judgy person, but that's who I am. I know you've had hardships. We all have. That's probably why we're all friends. Wait, actually, Is that really, what we're calling us. I could just be a guard, and we just have that other person drink uh, the invisibility potion. I think the dimension door author locate object coordinates is probably our best bet right now. I agree with Reed. I think so too. I At least we can go ahead and do that right now if we wanted to up in one of the rooms and then if it fails we can't do it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus like if there is something in there we are invisible. You know? So Invisibility wears off. Traps don't care if you're invisible, though. Yeah, traps don't. Yeah, well, like, I'll cast it like after. But we go like we. Like, it'll be immediate. Like is I there can hold the spell. Any chance I? of someone being in the basement when you dimension door in? Only if I can get in. When do you guys want to try the dimension door? Uh, right now. I mean, I'm down for it whenever. I don't want to go to class anymore. I just want to get this done. Hedrian, do you have any way? Oh, wait, never mind. What's up? Never mind. I was going to say if, if you had like pass without trace. Two, then you uh, could also put that on, but it would take us out of invisibleness. I mean, I, okay. I think if let's, I I can hold the, the invisibility spell, so it right, so it can be like as soon as I go through the dimension door, I instantly make us invisible. Is that how that works, Matt? It's an in instantaneous spell, as far as casting goes. Yeah, it's an action. Yeah, so it takes, you know, a second or two to cast. Yeah. But yeah, basically, as soon as you appeared in the other room, you could finish casting it and, and be yeah. invisible. You would just be visible in the room wherever you end up for yeah, so a like, little bit. Like... Yeah. yeah, so like, I would... If there was anything down there, I would be visible for like, like a little bit, like just like a second, and then we would just be gone. If anything was in there, and they also like are sane enough to be like, "Wow, I'm gonna go check that out too," and they like just happen to see that, there's like things we could do to like counter, like counter whoever's there or anything like that, or we could hide. We could there's there's things we can do while we turn invisible, but and we have. I think we would have the advantage at that point. Unless it's magical. Yeah. In which case. Well, if it's magical, I doubt we would be able to dimension door in there anyways. If it's like protected by magic like that. I just don't feel comfortable you guys going down there by yourselves. I don't and feel comfortable down there by yourself just by your I, well you we didn't have any there. other option yeah so now there's two people going down instead of just one I just wish you would hear me okay alright you guys want to try this out well it's just you guys there's no what am oh, I doing do you still want to Go to see if you could get into the basement in case. I mean, I can try. I mean, we could we could wait for like uh, some sort of like report from Kalora before we do that. Just in, in case if she does get in there, we have an even better idea of what's down there. Okay. Yeah. You guys can like do that. that. Yeah. Laura, if you wanna go in on your own before. I was willing to do it before. I'm willing to do it now. Okay, that sounds good. You're gonna do amazing, Kalora. Wait, are you gonna go right now? Yep. 
Okay, you're already gonna do amazing, Kalora. I believe in you. And you're awesome. As far as we can Doesn't that only last a minute? Ten minutes. Okay. Claire Bold, are you here? <laughs> I'm here. Um Do you wanna go to the church? Yeah, let me do uh one thing uh before that though, and I'll cast uh, protection from energy on Kalora. Uh, nice. And you're gonna get protection from cold. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, let's get, let's hit the third. Sounds good. Alright. Let's rock and roll. Everybody close. Oh, no, 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 no. Matt, was it uh, stairs up to the steeple? So you guys start making your way towards uh, the southernmost gate to the poor families district. I have a question, actually. Sure. Can't hear you, Lex. You're muted. Oh, sorry. That was on Josh's. Uh, Nate, you go first. I'll go afterwards, as long as it's right before they leave. Um, is there a spot where they'd be able to see me from the bell tower, and I'd be close to the entrance of the neighborhood area? Yeah, you could be in between like the first set of houses um, by the gate. It's 50 feet away. It's 50, probably 60 or 70 feet away from the gate because there's that 50 foot gap between the gate and the housing. But yeah, you could be in between the first and second houses there in the little alley. I'm just going to uh, tell uh, the Clara Bold, I'm going to stand outside near the entrance. If you see anything going wacky, you know, just uh, give me some sort of signal. I'll be watching you, and I'll race him. Okay. 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 I think uh, I, th I think he'll be up in the bell tower, so he might be better. I'm probably going to be inside, just meditating. I'll be at the top. Okay. Then uh, Narfer. Yeah. Cool. All right. Hey guys, while we're walking, I have one last idea. I think Lex was going to do something before you guys left. Oh, sorry. Um, don't get yourselves killed. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, Lex. I, Thank I kind of look at Kalora because I know she hated the words that came out of my mouth. I'm trying to see if it worked. <laughs> All right. So then I, uh. Oh, by the way, um. Also, Zapper for one thing later. So, okay. in case you guys want to know. All right, that was me. I have one more idea. So, with the dimension door, you can only get one person in at a time. Depends on your size. You can get uh, two people. Would me and Tito be considered? One regular sized human if we stood on each other's shoulders? DM? <laughs> <laughs> We'd be the same size as him. Why don't you go in as a spider? You have to wear a trench coat. Oh, okay, so here's what I'm th I know, right? <laughs> yeah, if you go in as a spider. If Galora doesn't fit. No, Maybe so here's what I'm thinking. Try. Okay. If I go in as a spider, and I go to the room that I know where it is, and I can tell you guys where it is, I can cast a spell. I think, Tito, you might have it, and you've maybe used it before, but I can use hallucinatory terrain. So I could maybe just make the room seem like nobody's in there. That's really cool. Okay. Bad. And then maybe you guys can bamf into the room. Okay. As quiet as possible. Tito, can you ca be? Can you make three people invisible? Yeah, it's a it's a fourth level spell slot though. I know. So is my hallucinatory terrain. It'd be putting the big things up front. Oh yeah, that's what we like to do though. Uh, okay. All all in, all or nothing. Huh? All, right. All right, so if we did that, then you guys bamped in, then the three of us would be in that room, and we'd be entering at the same point. And I don't have to concentrate on hallucinatory terrain. 
I could even make it just seem Probably like the door is closed to the room. Yeah. And then we could disarm the trap together. Okay, there's no... Hold on. Hold on, Alexa was saying something to me. What were you saying, Alexa? I was saying, like, did you guys all walk off, like, Hezreen included? I I assume so. Yeah, they're all on their way. We're to walking. The, uh... Okay, Zaffir would have gone with. Okay. All right. So yeah, now we're continually walking. So what do you think of that? Because then, I can also um. You have the lock picks, right, Hezreen? Yes, ma'am. If you try and pick, if it's like a lock thing, we can have you try and pick the lock. Yeah. If it's a magic thing, I can dispel the magic. Okay. Yeah. And I, I can, can, I can oil the, magic too. And I could oil the thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because I got little hands. I can, like, get up all, all up in there. And I can also, as soon as I cast hallucinatory terrain. Hold on. I'm just reading through everything and making sure. This all stacks the way I want it to. Take your time. Okay. So, I would have to get in as a bug, bamf out. As a person, <laughs> cast hallucinatory terrain. I can then cast pass without a trace once you guys get in there. Okay. And then I could still also dispel magic if I need to. Okay. I mean, I don't want you to lose like. Use like your slots, so I could also dispel magic as well. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And I'll also oil it. Yeah. Whoever all has of the, the oil spells that I give it to me. All of the spells that I have to cast do require some type of vocal component. Okay. So I'm Stop. gonna have to be quiet. I think. We have to set a agreed amount, agreed upon amount of time. Okay. Because I won't be able to communicate with you. So I'm going to have to get in there with enough time to make my way to that room. Bamf, you know, into a human, set up the hallucinatory terrain. Okay. So how much time do you think it, so we can have an idea? When I was a spider, Matt, how long did it take me to, like, traverse from the house, that window, to that room? I mean, it like, wasn't very far. A minute? A minute or two. Okay. Okay, but, but... I mean, we could say five minutes just for safety and, and the off chance somebody's in there. You know yeah. what I mean? Okay. Uh, I mean, if you guys are just going all the way there, I'll just say you guys, as you're having this discussion, you finish up as you start nearing the church. So is almost everybody here, or who who is not here? I guess. Uh, I believe Lex is the only one that's not there. Okay. So question, Matt. Yep. If I cast Pass Without a Trace on us now, I left their sphere, it would be on me. Would it be on them? But once they got back to me, yeah. would it be on them? Yeah? Mm -hmm. cool. So that probably makes the most sense to do that now. Yeah. So maybe you guys should go up to the bell tower and that's the bamfing point. 
okay. Then you're not, like, standing in front of the house. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. From the bell tower to the house, Matt, how much feet do you think that is? Like, uh, probably around 300. Okay. Bet. But so you're with that range. Probably 150 feet. Okay. Bet. That room. Oof, this is a lot of gambles. Yeah, I know. It's a gamble. Go Kalora! But we got this, we got this. Okay. Stay true. The so that's the plan. Mind. We're gonna that's what we're gonna do? That's what we got, that's what we got. You don't wanna okay, so we're doing that plan and not that you just bamf down into the basement. That's plan B. Okay, that's plan B. Yeah. So wait five minutes. Okay. And then bamf in. The if basement. there is something that the plan needs to be aborted. Okay. We need, we come we need, like, a, everything? We need like a we need like a signal. <laughs> Do you have like a spell you can cast that's like Yeah, that's kinda what I'm thinking. If plan needs to be aborted I am going to cast like Everything. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Like daylight. You're gonna see like a really like bright spot appear. So watch for the windows and stuff. Okay. 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 And if and if something goes really wrong and you start to see guards going crazy, save yourselves. No. <laughs> I'm serious. We'll save you. I can save. just be like a sweet little girl who thought uh, you know, there were cookies on the inside of this house or something. Grandpa's cookies. All right, so I cast Pass Without a Trace. All right. And I'm all stealthy. I turn into a spider. All right. And as the group splits off, one going to the clock tower and the other, with the exception of Core, going to the uh, house, we will take our first break. We'll be back yes, in sir. 15 minutes. Is she going to be riding stick again? No. I don't think so. I mean, I can if you want. Yeah, I put stick down next to you. Okay. Come on, stick. We'll be back. Wow. We're doing the heist right now. What's yeah, up, guys? Yeah. Eating some wings? Yes, we got food. Oh, yeah? Well, wings half day. Wait, did they say they're going to take a break? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even catch that. I mean, we can still talk, you know. Oh, I got nuggets? No, we're not allowed to. You got... Oh! Wait, you got Dad's nuggets in that box. BRB. Andrew, did you catch my high five? When I texted you? What's up? Did you catch that I was giving you a high five? When I texted you, when did you text like, me? You were like, "That's the way we do it. Everything up front." Uh, no, I didn't catch that. I was like, "I want to give him a high five," <laughs> but I didn't want to stop everybody else's conversation. Cool. Yep. RP. RP lifestyle. So we have a plan now. Yeah, who would have thought? I could not believe my ears. <laughs> we're we're executing the plan right now. Right. Like what? Uh -huh. All right. So she's going in. Gonna go all blurry mode. For them, Hallucin hallucinogen, and yeah. then we're gonna wait like five minutes or whatever, and then we're gonna go. Dimension door in to where it's all hallucinogenic. I guess so. Would we be in the hallucination then? Might have to make a save. Well, 
No, Tito. <laughs> okay, so I'm going into this room, which is basically a glorified cleaning closet with a whole bunch of other things. I'm going to make the entrance to that room seem like the door is closed. And then you guys are going to bamf into that room. So I'm not making it like the whole room, just like the door. Okay. So people won't be able to like see inside unless they come inspect and see that, you know, it's an illusion. Okay. Um, and then you bamf into that room and we try and disarm the the trap with the oil and that whole thing. Yeah. But we have to be super quiet though while all that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. cool. I'll be back. Bye. You <laughs> what you playing, homie? I don't know, actually know how this song goes. Yeah, song is like, gotta get you, da, 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 da. it's like, gotta get you out of my life or into my life. Or... I don't know the song. Or maybe I don't know your version. Probably, I don't even know the song. But... Oh, so you're just making it up. Got you. I mean, it's a real song. Some like 60s or 70s song. It's one hundred percent a real song. What? What? I said it's one hundred percent a real song. All right, what's the song, Jamie? Tell us. I, I know exactly what song he's playing. So give me a sec. Let me find. Let me YouTube it. If it's like Grateful Dead or something, I wouldn't know it. <laughs> Put it in the chat. Uh, there's chat. What chat? The roll twenty one. Solomon Burke is the artist. Solomon Burke. Yep, a name that's right over my head. You said those words. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Jamie figuring it out. Where is also, it? Where did he put it? Discord? No, he literally just put it in the chat, like on the screen. Oh. Oh. Yeah, there's a hangout chat. I can. Oh, it says show messages. Hey. Look at that. Send a message to everyone in the call. Oh, dang. I don't need to do that. Nope. Bad idea. Chat. Do you see it? The little guy on the left? Yeah. Pierce says, uh. Also, I have a newfound appreciation of Core talking to animals. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, hold on, this is a very important conversation. <laughs> yeah. Get you off of my mind, okay. Gotta get you off of my mind. I'm pretty sure it's been a very covered song, too. Yeah. A lot of people. I never covered it, so. Do you take requests? Sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, Genie in a bo Bottle by Christina Aguilera. <laughs> nice. 
Uh, how do we start? Oh shit, I don't know. You're the musician. Okay, okay. Let me out. There we go. I don't even know how the chorus goes. I don't really either. I'm sorry. Pokemon theme song. Uh, Pokemon theme song? I really should know, huh? Starts off with I want to be the very best like no one ever was. Oh. Train the news I thought. You sing it. How do you sing? How does? No way, homie. Okay. <laughs> you don't know the song? No, I do know the song. No, no, Nate. Pokemon. Yeah, you, you should you know, know the it. song. I mean, I don't know the chords, so I'm struggling with the melody. Yeah. How I want to like... be the very best. Right. <laughs> that's a, that's how far I got. Like no, no one, one ever, ever was. What was? Or was it was? It was. It? was. <laughs> I don't know. You know, those, those songs are made in Japan. <laughs> no, the song wasn't made in Japan. Are you sure? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the, uh... <laughs> The whole English thing? <laughs> Hint? Uh, but that's how it started. Totally. Oh, come on, Pop. I mean, let's see. Nate, this is really embarrassing for you. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm embarrassed for you. Shoot, I think everyone is. I mean, that Pokemon creator, definitely. He's definitely <laughs> embarrassed. <laughs> he's low-key snooping on this. And he's like, oh, that man? Mm -mm. Gotta go. He's not the very best like no one ever was. He wants to show up to your house and break your guitar in the middle of the night. True. And well, Pikachu will do it. Hell yeah. Detective Pikachu, actually. Yeah, Detective Pikachu. That was such a freaking fantastic movie. Thank you! Yes, it was! It was brilliant! Hey, I was right. It's A minor to G. That's crazy. Good job. Still doesn't make up for your lack of, you know, melody there. Was. Catch them all. I don't know how the melody goes. It's my real test to train, train the mid <laughs> I will travel across the land. Searching far and wide. Teach Pokemon to understand the trust that they're inside. What? Yeah. Uh, to trust that or the power that's inside. Yeah, the power like, that's inside. I'm like, homie. The power that's inside. <laughs> Pokemon. Gotta catch them all. I don't know, honestly, the rest of the song. It's you and me. I know it's my destiny. Pokemon. Uh, oh, you're my best friend. Yeah. The world we must defend. World we must defend. Pokemon. Gotta catch them all. Gotta Gotta catch them all. Heart so true. Our courage yep. will pull us through. You teach yep. me and I teach you. Nailing it. <laughs> Pokemon. Pokemon. Ooh, who left us? Ben. Ben left us. Oh, Ben's back. Ben. Nope. <laughs> All right, Nate, here's your homework. Next Saturday, Pokemon. I want you to have that learn. The train the miss my cars. If you were playing a live concert and you did the Pokemon theme song on stage, everyone would sing. Everyone. Yeah. I would it's hope so. Classic. Except Nate, like, he doesn't know the words. I mean, you just mumble through it, right? <laughs> no, you don't mumble. 
Cheers, Josh. <laughs> so while everybody has been away, uh, Nate is learning the theme song to Pokemon with some help from Jamie and I. Mostly fun. I'm just judging silently. Yes, but he needs critique, obviously. Pokemon. Cool. Uh, <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Great use of time, guys. I think uh, we were about to start walking towards the church, right? With... We were about to fuck shit up. Yeah. Damn, natural one. Yeah, we split up. I think that one went. Cast it past without a trace. She went her way, and then we went our our separate way as well. Cool. So uh, you guys start heading towards the church that you guys are familiar with. Um, Chill Church of Ilmater, with the exception of four, who heads towards the uh, alleyway between the first and second set of houses directly across from the gate. You guys just open the door to the temple and go in. I'm following Clarabold wherever he's going since he is the main guy of the church along with Brad. Yeah, we're just going to waltz into the church. Okay, so you guys... You're muted, Lex. Shit. Um, Zephyr would stay outside the church waiting for, you know, the next move from Hezrian. Okay. Yeah, I'll stay outside too. Cool. So the rest of the group heads inside the church. Um, where Yosef is uh, nowhere to be seen, as a matter of fact. The church is empty at the moment. After a minute, after you guys walk in, the side door from Yosef's office opens, and he kind of brightens as he see, put, sees Clara Bolt um, and Brad. Ah, uh, good afternoon. Or, good morning. Welcome back. How are you? I'm well, Yosef. How are you? I'm Absolutely fine. It's lovely to see, and you've brought friends. Yeah, but, well, you know Brad already. Uh, this is my other friend, uh, our friend. Uh, can we just, you know, kind of hang around the church? I was going to meditate a little bit. Brad may be doing the same. Um, do you mind if our friend goes in the bell tower? Is that okay? Is that suitable? Um, I, I, I. I don't see why not. Uh, okay. Certainly. Nice. I appreciate that. Thank you, Yosef. Of course. Quick, quick thing. Josh, you got to come with us, right? Since you got a dimension oh, door yeah. at the top. Yeah, I literally, yeah, I just thought about that. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah, I just thought about that. The top as well. Yeah. All right, Zapper's going to the top, but obviously only thinking of Onatar as he walks through. Oh, wait. I uh, hope so Zapper, uh, Ezrian, and Narfren all need to use the bell tower. And Tito, I guess. Well, where's Tito? Tito. Yeah, he's coming with us, too. <laughs> Alright, so we walk in with uh, six people, seven people instead. Three. Where's Brad? I saw him. He was here. I'm ben. here. Ben, what are you doing? I'm I'm meditating. So yeah, though so Yosef allows the rest of you to go ahead and use the bell tower for whatever purpose you might need it for. Rather confused, you, but thank you, Yosef. Thank you. Melody, are you coming too? <laughs> I was planning on. I didn't hear what you said. Because I didn't think you. I I was planning on staying in reading because I thought you guys wanted less people. Okay. For the bell tower. Okay. So the rest I, of you go up sorry. top and take your take your respective places on the bell tower. It's kind of a tight squeeze with that many people, but you guys make it work. What were we gonna say, Claire Bold? Uh, I wanted to talk to Yosef real quick after they head up. Okay. Uh, has everything been going well? I haven't seen you in uh, has it been a day? A few oh, days? It was just here yesterday. 
That's been fine. Um, we have had one service since you left us. Uh, we had a uh, an interesting encounter that I'm trying to still understand. Um, it it would seem that Ilmater has has spoken to us in this temple. That's interesting. How? What happened? He he spoke to us and told us we were doing a good job and uh, some other things, and then opened the back doors and. He was gone. Does that, does that happen often? It's it's never Which... happened before. I've been reading through, pouring through the scripts, trying to find anything that is uh, similar to in an event like this, but I can't find anything. Um, have you ever have you ever had an experience like? I I've never spoken directly to a god. No. Well, we must be doing something me. something right, I suppose. Obviously. Well, if that's the case, how can I help? Have you heard anything in the city? Anybody in need? In particular? Uh, well, you can always come out with the, me in, in the mornings to go feed the poor, of course. What time do you go out? I, I leave here around 5.30. 5.30 in the morning? Okay. Head down to the Dwarven District mostly uh, to find those who don't have homes, that sort of thing. Oh. Oh. Okay. Then maybe I'll be back. Great. And uh, but for, I guess for now I just I want to meditate and take in um, the church and everything. Of course. If you don't mind. It's at your disposal. So I would just be meditating and, and looking at anything in particular, any symbology, pictures, anything that may strike me as. Um, familiar or inspiring, I guess you would say. Sounds good. Chris, do you have anything to talk about on the uh, bell tower? Um, no, not necessarily. Nothing for me, really. Just kind of reassuring Tito that of the plan. Making sure he knows the plan, making sure I know the plan. Pretty nerve wracking. Cool. I want to wave to him when they get up there. You guys can see the bugbear on the alleyway across the, the way. Well, I've got my hood up, but yeah. They still know who you are. Yeah. Cool. Um, Kalora. You've just gotten on to, uh, to Sticks back and are heading. He's going to follow the same route that he did before if uh, you don't have any input. Go ahead and um, roll stealth for both Galora and Stick. I roll for Stick too. No, Nathan rolls for okay. Stick. Twenty-three. Do we have passes out of trade? Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry. It's gonna be A. Are you still? Twenty. Cool. Uh, unseen, you guys get up to the uh, the area of the fence that you used before. Once where Stick dropped you off, he stops after you uh, after getting there and kind of looks back at you over his shoulder. I do a little dance with my spider legs. Okay, he kind of chitters to himself. And then I make my way towards the window with the crack. Okay, you climb over the, uh, the fence and make your way up to the second floor of the Calamest Mansion, uh, going to the guest bedroom window where you were before. And then we can go ahead and move over to roll 20. I've got it up. So do I. You know where your spider is? Oh, there it is. And you get inside through the, the same window. The uh, more well-lit room, since it is daytime now, and it was night last time you were here, uh, is empty. Okay. I'm going to make my way to the door frame and look under. Do I see anybody? Make a perception check.
Nine. Nine. Don't see anybody. You can okay. vaguely hear somebody moving downstairs. I uh, make my way over here. Okay. Is uh, Owen's bedroom open? Closed. Closed. Is the door to the closet open or closed? Closed as well. Okay. Okay. I go in okay. under the door. Under the door. Is there anybody inside? No. Okay. I am... Who has the... Does Tito have the oil? I just want to make sure. Yeah. Tito has the oil. Okay. So... The door is already closed. So I am going to wait. Probably perched right underneath the door. How long has it taken me about to get to this point? A minute? A, a little under a minute since uh, last time you had to deal with Owen coming through. Okay. Um, I probably wait for about two minutes and pay attention to see if I can listen or hear and or see anybody from underneath the door frame. Okay. Go ahead and make another uh, perception check. It's cocked. 23. 23. Okay. Um, kind of using your spider senses to try to ascertain what's going on in the house at the moment. Um, you vaguely hear sounds uh, from the second door. Um, so what you know to be Tiffania's room um, of drawers opening and closing and then occasionally the creak of a bed. Okay. Um, and from downstairs, uh, you can hear uh, what appears to be uh, either silverware or uh, dishes being moved around, just faint clinks and clanks. Okay. Um, so now I'm about three minutes. I know my friends are probably going to be arriving in about two. So, <clears throat> shit. The door's already closed. I'm not going to cast Hallucinatory Terrain until I'm about one minute away from them getting in there. Okay. And then I'm going to make it look like the um, the room is empty. Okay. Um, okay. You I'm cast a spell. That one has the verbal component as well, right? Yeah, so should I make a stealth check? No, I'm just making perception checks. Okay. Um, I'm trying to be as quiet as possible. Sure. You get through casting the spell and carefully listen out to see if anything else is uh, stirring in the house. And nothing seems to have changed. Obviously, I've dropped form now. I'm regular Kalora. Okay. Oh, gee. What, can I have my main mini? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, there she is. I'm going to stand right here next to the door. So on the off chance, I hear it open. <laughs> sure. And, and then I wait. wait. Okay. Jumping back to Tito, Narfrin, and the gang. Um, Tito, Narfrin, Hezrian, and the gang, sorry. Um, as you guys are the ones actually doing stuff. Um, it's been about two and a half minutes. You've seen no crazy explosions yeah. of guards. The guards are still patrolling normally. Okay. What would you like to do? Am I able to see the window where she is? Or is there a window on that door? Uh, on, that, on that room? I can't remember. Oh, no, there's no window on that door. There's or no window on that door. And you okay. wouldn't be able to see it anyway. Okay, cool. I'm just still watching the windows. Yeah, just waiting uh, Just waiting until it hits 5 o'clock. Uh, 5 o'clock, uh, 5 minutes past. Yeah. Another 30 seconds goes by, and 
your internal clock starts going off. It has been five minutes since we left. It's been five minutes. All right. So knowing what I know about the uh, the um, god dang, what's the word I'm looking for? Just so you know, Matt, I told them specifically where the room was on what side of the house. Like yeah, I gave them all the info. Yeah. So correct. So knowing all the coordinates and whatnot, five minutes oh. passed. Like at Tito, I'm just like, are you ready? I'm like ready. Now, I'm, I'm kind of oh, okay. Let's go. No. You mute it. You mute it. Oh, I think Zephyr wanted to cancel the ability, wait. right? As Zephyr and I touch uh, Hezrian, and I say, uh, "Let Onatar bless you with Cat's Grace," and then enhance ability on Dex checks. Mm. Thank you, Zephyr. Thank you, Zephyr. Thank Onatar. Uh, I was just about to thank Onatar as well. But all right. Thank you, Onatar. All right. Sorry, right, let's get it, Tito. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. So then I proceed to use uh, the Dimension Door Amulet, knowing the, you know, 50 feet down. And... Oh, you're going to the... No, 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 no. 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 We're to going to you. <laughs> to you. <laughs> to me. Got you. Got you, got you, got you. So, yeah, all right, we're going to the room. Oh, she is. All right. Good luck. Oh, shit. You take the amulet in your hand, twist the tiny doorknob on it, and open the door. And just as you do, directly in front of you, a spectral door ap appears um, and opens wide for you guys to walk through. You grab Tito and step through the door. You guys feel the cold sensation that you now uh, know as teleportation magic. And the Galora, you see a, do a similar spectral door open on the side of the storage closet, uh, right on the wall, at Tito and Hezrian step through without a sound. I have my finger up to my lips in the shush. I, I hold my hands up to them, like ask, like kind of ask, like asking with my hands that I like to, like good to do invisibility, like kind of. Like, I give like a thumbs like, up. I, I say I, in I, Tito's head. Yep. I give two thumbs up. All right, uh, fourth level invisibility. Just I put my hands on. Kalora's shoulder, and then his, and then on Tito's, like on on Hezrian's knee. Now <laughs> turn us invisible. Cool. So the three of you, uh, as Tito finishes casting his spell, um, go invisible. You guys are all unseen as of now. It's now been around six minutes. In their minds, I say to them, um, "Follow me. The trap door is over this way." Tito, get ready with the oil. Uh, I have it out. And I lead them over. Oh, well, you can't see me to follow oh. me. I tell them where it is in the room. <laughs> okay. Um, and... So you walk over to where the, uh, the trap door mm -hmm. is, or the small section of floorboard that, you know, rises up. Pointed yep. out to Tito. Tito, do you apply the oil? Yes. So you can just make out the hidden hinges. They they kind of go across a uh, a seam in the wood, and you can just see them. You put some of the oil on the rag and wipe it on both hinges. Oil has been applied. Okay. Huh. All right. Can I um? Can I just check for traps? Sure. Make an investigation check. Uh, 14. 14. You start looking for traps, and as you do, uh, <laughs> right? who's got the highest, who's got, what is your passive perception? 16. Oh, definitely. 14. Garbage. Yeah, mine is, uh, 14. Okay. Uh, Kalora, you hear, uh, a door in the hallway open, and footsteps come out. Does it sound like where I knew Tif Tifania's bedroom was? Yep. Okay. Does this footsteps sound like they're getting closer or further away? Further away. Okay. I tell them in their mind that Tifania, I think Tifania left her bedroom. She might be going to her father's room, is which is on the other side of the house. Okay. You do not notice any traps. 
Sweet. Is there like a lock? No, it's just a floorboard. When he lifts up oh, the floorboard, there's nothing in it? Oh, I thought he was checking for traps on the outside without oh. no, uh, yeah, I will. opening it. No, yeah, I was too. Yeah, I was just checking for traps on the outside just to make okay. it. Yeah, Kalora, when you saw him opening it, he shoved a dagger in between two floorboards and prized, prized it up. Okay. So you were pretty sure there's no traps on the outside where the floorboards are. Okay. So lifting it up. Okay. What you do I see? You lift it up, and the light suffusing through the room uh, shines down within the hole, and you see a uh, a lever um, with a small socket in the top that looks almost like uh, if you cut a glo a hollow globe in half. It's kind of slightly misshapen, but it looks like something fits in there. I look around the room. Do I see this? Yeah, all three of you see it. I remember specifically an amber crystal. Would that amber crystal be about the size and shape? Yep, and you took it. And I took it? You took the crystal, the amber. Okay. I nice. say to them in their minds. Going forward, I'm just going to say I say to them, but I'm saying it in their minds. Um, I think I have something that will fit in there. I took it the last time I was here. And I tell Hezrian to put his hand over the area, and I'll put it in his hand. Okay. Peter tries not to giggle. <laughs> Sorry, so I put my hand over the uh, area she described. And, you know, my hand's open. Can I, like, when we're invisible, can we feel people? We can feel people, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I feel for his hand, and I put it in his hand. Okay. All right. Try that. So then I put that to the uh, lock or the you know, sphere. Onto the lever. Oh, yep. Yeah. It fits into the hole perfectly, and you hear a faint as it locks in. All right, bet. Does anything in the, in the room happen? Nope. It's just the top of the lever that fit in top on it. On gotcha. It. Okay. Okay. Um, well, should you pull the lever? Okay, so let's open it. Yeah. So I'll pull the lever. Okay. You pull the lever, and as you do, you guys look up to see the section of wall just in front of you, uh, which looked perfectly whole without a crack in it, swing open on oiled hinges without making a sound, revealing a room behind. It looks bet, like this. Bet. It is lit by two magical torches on either side, and there is a descending spiral staircase in the center of the room. Okay. I go in, and then does it look like you can close the door that opened? Yeah, it looks like you can on just the inside. Back okay. Closed. I feel for like Hezrian or something, so like I so I can like kind of follow him and like. Okay. I am here. Yep, and once I check with them to make sure they're in the room, I try and quietly close the door behind us. Just to be clear, did you close the trap door or anything? Yeah, I'll do that as well. Okay. You guys enter the room and close silently the door behind you. It just clicks back into place. You guys are now alone in the secret stairway. You guys ready? I'm always ready. So I'm yeah. like, I'm trying to see this image on Real Twenty. It's not really loading for me. We're about to switch switch to a new map anyway. Oh, okay, cool. It's just cool. a room with a stairway. Oh, yeah. gotcha. I want to grab hold of both of their hands and start leading them down the staircase. All okay. right, I follow. Well, I follow here. Yeah. You guys yeah. are begin heading down the staircase. Let me know when the new map loads in. I gotta make your tokens real quick on this new map.
I advise people to look at the group me. <laughs> we just saw. Tito's like freaking out, but also like super like excited. Yeah, I'm By trying to way. keep it. I'm trying to keep it cool. Is yeah, that I, I, I'm keeping it cool. Yeah, it's it's Lux, right? Lux. It. Hell yeah, it is. This is what I described to her. What she looked like, and then she brought it to life. That's, that's awesome. actual art. Yeah, that's yes. that's yeah. Awesome. That's fire, dude. Wait, what? That's really tough. I love that. Who did that? Um, somebody I found on Instagram. Cool. I tagged her in it on my Instagram, so you can see her uh, profile. Yeah, that's that's really good. She's right. Italian. Mamma mia. So, as you guys head down the spiral staircase, you we get still don't see the map. Just so you know. It's all black, I know. Oh, okay. Okay. You guys, uh... Let's see. You get probably about 30 feet down. And Kalora... Go ahead and make a perception check. Since you're in the front, and you're the best at perception. Eighteen. Nice. Further down, you hear a noise, kind of a shuffling sound, and then a voice saying a word you can't quite make out. Uh, you feel like it starts with a K. And then you hear the sound of a door opening, closing, footsteps receding away from the door. I tell the boys to stop. All right, I stop. And I say, I heard something. Somebody's down here. Something's down here. I think back to what I learned about the family. Mm -hmm. And I remember that the family has a history with uh, a god of the dead called Kelimvor, which starts with a K. And I say, there might be undead down here. Can you quick? question can you hear like our thoughts correct yeah i mean it's like a communication so okay, i cool. assume that if you got gotcha. you say something back i get it i mean it's not it's kind of ambiguous <laughs> what would you say matt can you read it to me it just says that i can speak telepathically yeah i think that just means you can you can talk to them okay okay so i mean i guess after she says that i I mean, I mean, immediately brace myself for whatever's down there. Okay. Yeah. You guys keep going down? I, s I say... I gave a little squeeze. Wait, who whose hand am I holding? Am I holding Hezrian's or Kalora's? <laughs> Kalora's. Kalora's that you're holding both of your hands. Okay. Um, who's the... Uh... Squeeze my hand if you're very stealthy. I'm trying to figure out who's the stealthiest I, of us. I might squeeze her hand. I squeeze. Whose squeeze feels harder? Hezrians. Hezrians. I mean, I'm like... Hezrian, do you think you should uh, sneak up ahead? I'll stay within 30 feet of you. Okay, yeah. I could definitely uh, try that. With the, can I use my um, roll I got for Pass Without Trace last time, or can I, do I have to re-roll again? It'd Matt? be a new roll since it's uh, a different time. Okay. I'm following behind him, too. Okay. Yeah, Should I go as well? Her lead. Yeah, if you guys are being right. stealthy, make stealth checks. I'll keep in mind that Hezrian's up front. Oh, yeah. 27. Oh, I have to roll one? Yeah. All right. What 16, do I add? Plus 10? 16 plus, yeah, 16 plus 10. So 28. Yeah, you guys are stealthy AF as you walk down the stairs. Hezrian, you come up to a T 
T-junction. Mm -hmm. It looks like this. In the, uh, at the end of the stairs, you guys walk down the hallway a bit, and there seems to be a red light radiating from your right-hand side. You guys should be able to control yourself from this map too, by the way. Okay, I refresh my page. Um, Matt, real quick, you're like kind of quiet on our end. I don't know if anyone else is hearing that. No, he feels fine for me. Okay, yeah, never mind. I'm just fine. Carry on. But I, I now see the map. And there's a red light where you said? Uh, it's radiating from his right. Okay, like theoretically down that that turn. Like, can I peek my head around the corner so yep. I can see anything? You peek your head around the corner, and the room is empty. Is it completely dark? No, there's this red light that's suffusing through. Okay, completely. but like in this hallway, it's dark. No, there are, there are torches here, uh, like the okay. same magic torches that were at the top go all the way down. Okay, I just line. wanted to make sure I wasn't like blind. Yeah. So, in front of you is an iron door illuminated with a dull red light. This light emanates from a symbol embedded in the door, which looks to be made of ruby. The symbol displays a set of scales being held aloft by a skeletal, skeletal hand and arm. There doesn't seem to be a discernible mechanism for opening the door, but you can see that it has recently been moved, as some of the grime covering, covering the floor has been pushed to the side, as if by the swinging motion of a door. Okay. When I heard the voice... Did it sound ethereal, or did it sound like a human? Um, I know that's a weird question. Make a make an insight check. Wait, so what can I see? Am I still 18. like in the hallway, kind of? You're still in the hallway, kind of. Yeah, has you just kind of peeked his head around the corner? Gotcha. Um, it sounded human. I mean, as far as you could tell, it. I mean, I don't know if you know what a ghost sounds like, but it sounded human. I am a ghost-wise halfling. Bet. Yes. So, is there anything to the left? Uh, t taking a look to the left, it appears to be a dead end. Okay. Um. Shoot. I Can sneak my way that? into this room. I will follow Galora. Me too. You guys all go in there. And uh, it's, as I described before, the door is there. Kalora in the corner, just in the square just above you. Uh, you do notice a pile of dirty cloths that are just kind of piled up into maybe a rough bed there. Mm. Okay. Interesting. I'm like, stand in front of the door. Okay. Hey, you said scales, like musical scales? No, like uh, like a the scales oh. of justice almost. Oh, yeah, dang it. <laughs> that would have been too convenient. Can you describe the door one more time now that I'm coming up to it? Yes. Yeah. Um, in front of you is an iron door illuminated with a dull red light. This light emanates from a symbol embedded in the door, which looks to be made of ruby. The symbol displays a set of scales being held aloft by a skeletal hand and arm. There is no discernible mechanism for opening the door, but you can see that it has recently been moved, as some of the grime covering the floor has been pushed to the side as if by the swinging motion of the door. I say the name Kelimbor. As you say the name Kelimbor, the uh, symbol gro glows brighter for a moment, and the door silently swings open, revealing a pathway behind. I walk in. Tito is mind blown right now. I follow. Cool. As you guys walk in, you see there is a pathway ahead uh, that you can see a, a dull, almost torchlight coming from. Uh, there is a pathway to your direct uh, right that you can see a blue light coming from. And then there is a path, path, pathway to your left that you can see a green light coming from. The uh, path to your right, the one with the blue light, um, you can see reflections of shimmering water dancing on the walls and ceiling of the hallway. Okay. 
I Water. tell them that I am going to I'm going to cast a spell to locate the ring. Okay. And that my invisibility is going to drop. And as soon as I'm done casting the spell, I'm going to drink the potion. That core got me. Yay, nice. core. Dang. So I'll cast locate object. Okay. Can you guys see my pings uh, when the map is black? Can you see this ping? Please? Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. If you get a sense that it is, you might want to zoom out. Here. Whoa. Do it again. Holy shit. Okay. So being at the point where we are, we don't see any more of the map? Uh, yes, you do. I just haven't revealed it. Sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, so th this way is blue light. No, that's green light. That's green light. This is blue light. That's yep. blue light. And then there's yeah. torch light towards the one directly in front of you. Okay. I'm going to walk over here. Okay. As you I drank there. the potion, by the way. All right. Additional pathway reveals itself. I follow Kalora. She's okay, in no matter what. Can you move your token, Tito? Alright, I follow her too. Alright, and you can see the pathway takes another turn. Okay. Alright, for the purposes of this, are you guys uh, holding any of your weapons and stuff? I'm not, and they're all just stowed away. Okay. Yeah. I uh, just have a spear. Spear. My All back. Right, sounds good. I am. I'm on guard. While I'm starting to like take the the front here, I'm gonna be like looking out and see if there's any like discernible like glyphs on the wall or anything that looks like it might be some type of magical magical trap, anything like that. Sure. Okay. So this is the room that is revealed. Um, let me talk about oh, that. Shit. Uh, you enter a very well lit circular chamber with four magical torches placed on the walls. Um, do you actually go in, or are you guys just standing out there? I'm, I'm staying right at the edge. Uh, yeah, we're at the edge. Okay. Um, you can see the door. There's a door on the left hand side of the room, which is slightly yeah. ajar, and there is a crystal hanging on the uh, from chains in the center of the room. A green crystal. Hmm green crystal. You can also see here and here, two holes in the... Uh, I guess you can probably see this one too. Two holes in the uh, wall. They're just black holes. Uh, they actually look really impressively black in the wall. I tell them in their head, I think this is some type of trap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I nod. <laughs> Invisibly. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, the green orb. Have I? It might be a strange. Have I seen anything like that before? Does it... oh, it's a crystal. Sorry, not oh, a orb. But yeah, oh, you okay. can make a make an arcana check if you like. Arcana. Uh, eleven. Eleven. I mean, it's a crystal um it yeah. might be an emerald it's hard to really say but i mean you know that those are sometimes used in enchanting but you couldn't say what specifically this one is for okay well does there seem to be um like anything protruding out of the black holes nope So at the since we're at like the entrance to the little circle thing, can I just check for traps again? Sure. Uh, 
That's an investigation, right? Correct. Uh, 17. Yeah, no traps in the, in the immediate area that you can discern. All right. Dang. I think we gotta... I think we should go in. I think one of us should go in. Mm, all right. I'll go in. Okay. Go ahead and move your token to where you need to. Yeah, but let me get it out of the pan. Uh, probably like right here. Okay. Uh, Hesri, go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw for me. Fantastic. Yeah, shit, shit, shit. Is this just a spear or is it your spear? It's the uh, the spear I got from the temple. I okay. Think. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, wisdom. Does enhanced ability do anything for saves? I can't no, remember. No, they got dex. Uh, twenty-one oh, okay. for wisdom save. Twenty-one. You step into the room and you can just feel the twinge of something in the back of your head. Your hand that's holding the spear twitches, and you're able to shake it off. Dang. Okay. He seems okay. Yeah. I follow. I walk in. Okay. I follow behind Kalora. Both of you make a wisdom saving throw. Mm -hmm. Oh man. I have advantage on wisdom <laughs> saves against magic. Okay. okay. This is certainly magic. Good shit. So it's advantage. Yes. Yeah, yep. Natural 20. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Nice. Did you roll first? Lord knows we need that. 11. <laughs> Tito, what would you say is the item in your inventory that is probably easiest to grab on your belt? Uh, Be honest. Oh, man. What would I... Hmm. Fucking bagpipes. I was gonna say an instrument. Yeah, probably an instrument. Okay. Which one? Uh, I have my loot on my back. My, um, my bagpipes are like on the side, kind of thing. It's like tucked away because like you can crunch them up. Right. And then uh, the uh wire, it's kind of like on my. I feel like I would carry those on my back. Okay. Uh, so you choose li loot or liar. To keep? Just keep. Here's one of them in general. Uh, liar. Okay. Uh, you guys watch as, before you can react, Tito takes the liar off of his back and chucks it with both hands into the hole that's oh. nearest to him. You can hear horrible crunching and grating sounds as it is torn to shreds inside of the hole. Which oh, hole is nearest to him? He's not on the map. Uh, I'm going to move him. Oh, sorry. My bad, my bad. This hole. Oh, man. Okay. I don't know where he is, except for the fact that something just happened there. Yeah, all you could hear was, like, you could tell it was an instrument, because it made some, like, you know, stringy sounds. As it was I say, Tito, what's wrong? <laughs> like, Tito. Tito, what after happened? after you do that, Tito, you feel fine. I'm like kind of shook it. Um, I like kind of pace around, like trying to feel for someone. I walk in the direction of the hole, so he'd probably feel me. Okay. Um, uh, and I'm like, I like try to grab for her ear, and I'm like, I have no idea what just happened. As quietly as I just can. Okay. I mean, the noise your your liar made as it was destroyed was pretty loud, but yeah, you can whisper in her ear. So say I that. tell uh, Hezrian to get over to the edge of the doorway with us. All right. Yeah, I rush over there with them, and I stand as still as possible and would like to see if I can hear anything. Okay. Make a perception check. Seventeen. Seventeen. It is deathly quiet. Okay. Do I see anything from our perspective there? Uh, the door is still mostly closed. It's just very slightly ajar. If you want to open it up, you can. Yeah. Okay. You open the door, revealing 
do. Another room. This room uh, is completely empty, nearly, as far as you can tell. On the opposite wall, you can see a, uh, a rotting tapestry that depicts the same symbol as the one engraved on the door that you saw when you came in. There's a door on the north side of the room. Okay. Before we enter in, uh, I walked in. <laughs> I was... I was going to quickly check for traps before she did that. Okay, go ahead and tra check the traps. Can I maybe two, see? Uh, ten. As you're in the middle of, like, meticulously trying to, you know, search through the floorboards and see if there's anything that, like, could act as a button or a pressure plate, Kilora just walks past you into the room. Nothing. Okay. I see that, and I'm like, oh, okay, bet, and follow her. Okay. A door in front of you is made of wood. Uh, it looks to be in pretty bad repair. There are some holes in it that you could probably peek through if you wanted to. I look for any hinges. There are a set of hinges on the door. Two hinges. I oil them. Okay. You take the time to put some oil on the rag and nice. clean up the hinges as best you can. Do we see anything? Are you yeah, peeking out of the peeking, door? Yeah, peeking mm -hmm. through the holes. Okay. This area is revealed. You can see another door directly to your uh, the north of you. Um, a little bit over here, too, actually. So you can see that. There's two doors, both directly north. This chamber seems to go on a little bit further this way, too. It's just you can't see because of the window. Or because oh, of man. The door. We didn't even have to go the long way around. <laughs> I go here. I, I'm holding your hand. Okay. You go there. <laughs> Going into that room, you can now see the full extent of the largest room you've yet seen. Can you ping? Because I still have a located obje object going. Yes. Oh, Jesus. What the fuck? Ping. 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 Wait. Ping. Ping. Fuck me. Holy crap. Okay. Dungeons and Dragons. This room. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. <sighs> this is a large room that looks like it would almost act as a gathering area. Uh, there are boxes and crates lining some of the, the walls. The, books is, the wood is all in all of these boxes is rotting and broken. There is a fountain standing in the center of the room with water flowing from the top of a green crystal chalice resting at its peak. The water is clear and beautiful. You can make out four closed doors at the north side of the room, all along with two on the south. At the center of the south side of the room is also a large archway that leads further into the basement. So that... Yeah. Interesting. I walk that way. The only sound as you guys continue walking this way is the slight trickling sound of the fountain. Kalora's hands are getting a little sweaty, Tito. I don't notice. <laughs> his, are, his are probably sweaty too. Okay, cool. I get to the corner. Okay, you peer inwards. Mm -hmm. So you can probably see about. Oops. This much. It's a long archway, and there seem to be two uh, open, smaller archways in the, the middle on either side. I whisper to uh, Kalora, it's like, and you, you feel the object coming from this direction, yeah? Mm-hmm. I do. 
All right, onward we go. Those archways concern me. Correct. Seems like a perfect point to ambush somebody. So you can just barely see into that one. Onward and upward. Right. Yeah, I walked through. Went to the side, to the side. Where Kalor is walking. Okay. Can I see more into this one now? Which one? That one? I mean, yeah, you can see, you know, straight back. You can just barely see a uh, a table in there. Can Hezrian see into this one now? If he chooses to. I mean, he's standing in front of it. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, look, <laughs> I'll look into it. Okay, um, you look into that room that is this one. What the fuck? Um, looking into that room, you can see a small table on which is resting a silver bowl, which looks like it has a fine golden powder inside the bowl. Don't touch anything. Mm, tempting. I know. I'm looking at it, but I'm like strongly look away. I'm like, ah, let's keep moving. Okay. So I walk down. Okay. As you do, this room becomes a little bit brighter. This looks to be. Oh, by the way, let me just reveal it. This looks to be the main altar area. It's triangular shape held up by large pillars interspersed throughout the space. Oh, the shit. area is well lit by many small motes of light that slowly drift through the surrounding air. At the far side of the room is a throne of sorts made of dark stone with stairs leading up to its height. At the base of these stairs are two, two statues, one larger than the other. The larger statue depicts a noble human warrior, his long hair tied back by a headband wrapped around his forehead. A sword is bared in his right hand and an artist's paintbrush in the other. On his left hand, you can see a glint of metal on his finger. The smaller statue is a woman, her face turned to the statue of the man with a look of love and admiration on her beautiful face. Around her head is a crown made up of seven stars, and her left hand is a staff. These Am smaller I... statues also exist. You can see those. Uh, they look to be um, busts of uh, people. Hard to really say who. Mostly men. Am I getting a ping from the ring that's on his finger? Yes. I whisper to them, It's the ring that's on the statue. Oh, man. I have a feeling yes. if we touch it, it might come to life. That's what I was thinking, too. Are you guys uh, ready for a fight? I'm ready if you're ready. <laughs> noise. I whisper. Noise concerns. What? Noise. Whatever loud. You can't actually talk. Can you what just yeah, you can't talk? <laughs> I think they could hear me. An adventure. Sorry. What if we're loud? I mean, I we're down here, a, Tito. I don't recall a fight being quiet. How are we going to get out? You guys, uh, you guys can dimension door. I'll save one beast shape. I'll I'll invisible you before we leave. Okay. Still... If that ha if it comes to that. There's still that notion since they're two smaller people. Could they come with me, Matt? <laughs> um, it says your size or smaller, and I think it means size, as in the uh, the actual D and D variant of size. You know. Gotcha. What if she's spider too i mean that might work what if i'm a spider in his pocket yeah, yeah. I mean, that's yeah that's smaller so okay okay right. in the rules here 
All right. Well, I walked to this little alcove here. Did anything happen? Nope. I'm with her. Yeah, I'm with her as well. The motes of light are just gently floating. In space. Along this, like I, I kind of want to stay on the wall. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. I'm by you. No change as you guys get there. All right. So I guess we creep. We keep. We keep creeping forward. Okay. Still no change. All right. Couple more feet. Lauren Tito, are you following? Uh, I'm going right there. Would you know, <laughs> add the ring again? Be in a space like, away from uh, Kalora, please, Tito. Oh, yeah, my bad. Um, Hezrian, as you broach the line and get level with the last two busts, mm -hmm. you guys hear a grinding sound <laughs> as both statues begin moving as one. They, the one with the uh, the sword brings it in front of him like this and stands and then his head slowly turns to you, Hezrian. The other lifts her staff in the air and turns to look at Kalora and Tito. So but like the two, invisible. the two bust in front of them? Well, that's no, the, the two big statues. Oh, the, the big dudes? Don't. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Okay. Before this started, I'm sorry, I, I meant to ask this, but I was going to see if I because I was studying Kalimvor, if I remembered anything that depicts like a woman with a staff and stars above her head. Uh, make a history or arcana, uh, just a history, yeah, history or arcana check. <gasps> Not sure one, but I can reroll it. Nice. A nine. What? Nine. Nine? Doesn't ring a bell. Better than a one. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, which, can you ping which one has the ring again? I think it's the left one, right? It's the one on the right, but yeah, your player's the right. left. Okay. This one? Okay. So, like, how, how big are these dudes? They're each, like, 12 feet tall. God The damn. smaller one is probably only around 8 or 9 feet tall, but the big one, the one with the sword, is 12 feet tall. And they noticed us, even though we're invisible? So, I would like everybody to go ahead and roll initiative, please. Oh, <laughs> let's fucking go! God, oh, yeah. God, what? damn! What the, but... Oh, yes. Seventeen. Fuck yes. Twenty-one. Me. Let's go. Wow. <laughs> Sent the A team down there. Yes, so. sir. You already know. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, I can sound through one. There we go. All right. So, with that, as combat begins, Tito, you are first. Oh, yeah. Okay, um... <laughs> But is everyone alive? Even the little ones? No, the little ones have not moved. Yeah. Okay. Um. Can I hypnotic Can't hear you, Tito. Can't hear you at all. Yeah. It's like mumbling. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Sure. Alright, um, can I hypnotic pattern right in between both of the big ones? Hypnotic pattern? Yeah, you can certainly try. Uh, it's a, uh, wisdom save. Okay. Fifteen. Alright, let's see. 
Uh, this makes Hester not the best Avenger monster, right? Can't hear ya. Does this make Hesrian not? Does this make Hesrian not invisible? Yes. Yes, it makes yeah. everybody not invisible. No, the I'm still invisible. Oh, Kalor is still invisible. Uh, the uh, larger one passes. The second one fails. What is hypnotic pattern again? Um. Uh, on a fail save, the creature becomes charmed for the duration. While charmed by this spell, the creature is inca incapacitated and has a speed of zero. Okay. Uh, you feel that the spell should have had an effect on the creature. It looks past it and stares straight at, straight at you. It seems to have had no effect. On both of them? On both of them. Uh, okay, interesting. Uh, I tell Kalora, like, got this. I believe in you. And I use another bardic inspiration for her. Is that your turn? Uh. Cool. Oh, and. Oh, are you moving? Uh. Yes. Okay, go ahead, move. Two. Three. Four. Five. Alright. Kalora, let's go. Alright. I'm going to do the same thing and approach the altar. Do the statues follow me at all? Uh, the one that, uh, which, which statues? The big ones. Yeah, the the woman kind of tracks you both, you and Tito, as you move. And I stand up in front of the altar, and I say, Hail Kalimbor! You say it, and uh, the larger male statue looks at you, and then looks back at Hezrian. Uh, I'm like, huh? <laughs> it's worth a shot. <laughs> for real, for real. Okay. I am going to then cast... Flame blade. Okay. And at uh, third level. At. I'm I'm not going. I'm just going to cast it and hold it. Oh, okay. So I have my flame blade out. Gotcha. Is that your turn? Yep. Ezrian. All right. So seeing Kalora say "Hell, Kalimbor," and then them dudes switch to me. I'm just like, huh? So I'm just like. Hail Kalimbor, <laughs> praise the the one and only. So to be clear, the uh, the one the big male one was looking at you already. Oh. Kalora said her said Hail Kalimbor. He looked at her and then looked back at you. Damn, so this nigga's still on me. God dang. All right. And you say that, and he just continues looking at you. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. With that being said, I uh, use my bonus action and cast Shield of Faith. Okay. And uh, hold my action. If they start, you know, acting funky, if they start being crazy, uh, I hold uh, Guiding Bolt at a third level. Okay. Uh, the condition being if somebody attacks you? Yeah. If, if they begin moving, if they begin, yeah, forming an attack, yes, sir. Okay. With that... Um, The larger of the two steps within range of you, raises his sword and goes to attack. With his giant sword, he pulls it back and he's going to take the first strike at you. It's going to be a 20 to hit. Doesn't hit. Oh yeah, because it, your AC is 21, right? My AC is 22 right now. 22? What? Okay. Because you yes, got the plus one from Zaffir, right? Yeah. So he... Swings and you manage to deflect the bl the blow on your bracer. Yes, sir. Second attack is a 18 to hit. He swings down again and uh, again manages to uh, to miss. All right. So go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw for me. Actually, you and Kalora. Uh, 22. I'm fine. Actually, everybody. Sorry, I'm I was reading it wrong. 
All three of you. 24. Yeah, me. 22. The last three rolls I've made have been 18. Let's, let's keep that going. I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> So what's your Six. Oh wait, I have advantage against magic. Yep. Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, Tito, you are slowed. Your speed is half. You can't make more than one attack or action on your turn, and uh, you can't use bonus actions. AC is minus two. No. Oh shit. And he can't use bonus actions, right, or reactions. Yeah, he can use an action or a bonus a bonus action on his turn, not both, and he can't use reactions. You can repeat the saving throw at the end of your turn. Okay. Let's see if that legendary action recharges. <gasps> legendary. legendary? <laughs> oh God. All right. Next, the uh, the female steps up to Kalora as she's the closest, and she's going to try to batter you with her staff. Hey, quick question. No. Since, since I did the, since it moved, and I said I was holding my attack. Do I? Yeah, he gets attack? his attack off. Oh yeah, go for it. Better not have a high AC. I'm gonna be mad. <laughs> uh, I got a 13. Misses. Actually, what is that? A nine? No, that's a seven. That's a 14. Garbage. Yeah, still misses. Okay. Okay. All right. Next. So she's gonna take her first attack <laughs> on Yukawara. It's an 18 to hit. Hits. Okay. That's 12 points of bludgeoning damage with the first strike. That's a 29 to hit with the second one. Nah. And that's 15 points of bludgeoning damage with the second. Oh, man. Fuck me. That's its turn. Back to the top. Tito, you're up. Okay. Um, you can take a bonus action or an action. What is my speed if I'm 25 feet from the Is it like 12 and a half? We'll call it 10 since you wouldn't be able to get to 15. Yeah. Oh. Um. Oh, God. Uh. Um. Uh, I don't know what to do. I Something. look at the uh the 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 one with the ring, big one, right? And um. Does he have any metal on him? Just the ring. Wait, is the ring made of metal? Would I know that? Yeah, yeah. it's made of metal. Can I heat metal it? You can certainly try. Well, it looked. Do I? Does it just happen? Because there's no like hit DC. Tell me if you are doing it. There's no like hit. It doesn't tell me that I need heat. I know. Heat metal is something that just happens. Are you doing heat metal? Yes. Okay. You heat metal, and you can see, you can feel the spell taking effect. Nothing happens to the giant statue in terms of heat. He does not. His flesh is not burning. He is not concerned about the hot ring on his finger. All right. Well, uh, I'll drop it then. <laughs> if I can't. Yeah. All right. Can I re-roll for the? Yeah. Yes, please do. Do I do that as advantage as well? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Damn. One more try, bro. I don't... You know, you were still slowed. Are you moving? Uh. I no. Okay. Kalora, you're up. 
Okay. What is there like an actual chair up here? Yeah. Like yeah, an actual throne? Throne up there. Okay. I go up the stairs. Okay. And I will attack her with my flame blade. Oh shit, I'm gonna die. Go for it. No, I'm not. Yeah, we don't we don't talk like that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oh shit. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Come on. I don't wanna. Remember, you have bardic inspiration, by the way. I know, but... Alright. I'm going to cast... Cure Wounds on myself at second level. Okay. If I get hit again, I'm going down, guys. Got you. I got you. I got you. Okay, I healed for 16 points. All right. And that's it. Okay. okay. Hezrian, you're up. All right. Um, <clears throat> I want to use my bonus action to use a healing light on Kalora. Good thing you took that cleric level, Hesri. I know, right? Fuck. Uh, 10, 14, uh, 19 points of healing. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And this one I'm facing, that's the one with the ring on it, right? Right. All right, and... I'll cast Witch Bolt at third level. At the one I'm facing against. Go for it. Uh, 16. 16 misses. Okay. And rather, oh. it doesn't mix, miss. You see it uh, clang off of his stone facade and just <laughs> dissipate on his armor. Hmm. Interesting. Um, do I, I notice like you could have hit him in a more vulnerable spot that would have done damage? Yeah, I was that was actually gonna be my next question. Right. Um, if I can't ask, do I notice any like weak weak points on any of these dudes? Uh, make a perception check. If actually, do you want this to be your? No. Yeah. Make a perception check. I'll allow it as a free action. That's fine. Appreciate it. Uh, 15. 15? Uh, looking through, uh, they look to be full stone through and through. No real weak points. Okay, gotcha. Alright, now in my turn. Okay. Uh, next up is the one that you just attacked, Hezrian, and he's going to try to attack you. 19 to hit with the first one, so he misses. And a 19 again for the second one. Both times you managed to use your spear to fend off his attacks, and you're thinking that that's pretty fucking impressive because this guy hits really fucking hard. Hell yeah. Since he misses, could I use Hellish Rebuke? Go for it. Unless... It's a save, right? No, I was I was actually asking because I don't know if I have to like actually get... I think I have to get damage. I think it's no, just yeah, when you press yeah. the attack to you, isn't it? It says you, you point your finger in the creature that damaged you. Oh, okay. I get damage, yeah. So Sorry. never mind. Very good. Cool. I have my turn. No, his right. turn. So the uh, the female turns to you, Cora. She's going to attack you again. Okay. For 
first one's a 25. Second one is a 16. Uh, the second one misses. Okay. Seven points of bludgeoning damage as she kind of just catches you on the shoulder and you kind of push the blow away. She's going to turn, seeing you on the throne. Uh, ready for next attack. That's it. Tito, you're up. Okay. Am I, like, notice? Am I, like, realizing that they're, like, not, like, immune to magic or something? Or, like, am I, like, realizing what's happening, at least? They're not immune to magic. No? What? They're not immune to magic. Is it? Oh, wait. Yeah, it's just heat. He's yeah. Never mind. yeah, he's made of rocks, so the heat metal didn't really make him want to throw the ring on the ground. That's yeah. kind of what happened. You'd realize that. But like, with the hypnotic pattern? Yeah, like, that, I, like... that was something else, but you don't get the sense that they are immune to magic, just that they might have some immunities. Okay. I understand now. Yeah. Um... I sling a fireball at. Wait, never mind. He's close. Remember, with fireball, you can place it. Yeah. Yeah. Like behind. And... Is, that Is there a place where, like, I could toss my fireball and hit him? Let me get a thing out. One sec. Let me see. For... What's the radius for fireball? I think it's 20, right? Is a twenty foot sphere. Twenty foot radius sphere. Fly. Place it there. Or wait, is that ten foot? That's ten foot. It's that big. So you could center it there, just on the wall, right here. And that would hit just him. It would, Kor would be just outside of it. <laughs> She's got to feel some heat, though. Yeah. Okay. I can All take right. it. Yeah. We got to get it. We got to get it. I, I'm like, screw you. But I know I'm more like, screw you. Slow. Okay. So he's going to make a dexterity saving throw. 15. That's uh, nine, so he fails. Go ahead and roll that in. Yeah. That's six, baby. Is that the first yeah. successful fireball in this campaign? Probably. In the campaign? Uh, I think so, yeah. Oh, wait. Sorry. Sorry. I may do some eight, eight, six, You can roll them all at the time. It only goes up to five. Oh, you could roll five and then three. You can just type slash roll 8d6. Wow, it's only... Real? 1, 2, 1, 3, 3. Are you kidding me? 22. Yep. 22 damage. All right, that's still good. You uh, He gets a bit rocked by the fireball, kind of going forward a bit, and then coming back as the whole backside of him is now singed black with soot. The fireball dissipates, and Kalora, your uh, hair kind of gets blown back from the, the heat and the wind. Okay. Uh, and then I would like to uh, move right there. And then can I try to release myself from Solo? Go for it. Uh, 19. You are no longer slow, Tito. Woo! I'm having a pass. I'm having a pass. I'm having a pass. I'm having a pass. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Tito is doing. Like, he gives everything so fast again. Cool. Glory, you're up. Okay. So, if I go here, will I be stepping out of their combat range? Where? Right there. No, you're still in their combat range. Okay. I go there. And how do I do, like, a thingy? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to cast Wall of Thorns. Okay. Uh, let me just... I have to do it. It's a, it can be up to 60 feet long, 10 feet high, or it can be a, 
Yeah, that's what I want to do. I don't have an asset for Wall of Thorns, so I can just draw a shape. How just long? draw a line for me, yeah. Sure. I want it to go... How long is it? Uh, it could be up to 60 feet long. So I'm just trying to get both of them in it. Oh, so you just want to... Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like that? Yeah. Cool. It's a deck save. Let me delete all these throwing strikes. Deck save. Uh, the big guy's a 15. Damn. The other one's a 13. Okay, so the big guy passes, the lady fails. But that's 78 damage. Okay. Holy crap! Holy shit! Why you gotta what? show me up like that? That's from her wand of the woodlands. That's nasty. You have to roll for that now, right? Wand of the woodlands? Yeah. That's 32 points of damage to the one that failed and half of that 16 to the one that succeeded. And what do I roll again? Uh, roll a d20 on a nat 1, the wand breaks forever. But I can roll nat 1s, re-roll nat 1s, so... Not, not with the wand. It's a 6. Okay, fine. But the wand is, is has used all its charges for the day. Yeah. The uh, the smaller one, the woman, is looking pretty damaged now. You can see cracks appearing in her uh, her stone facade. All right, and just so you know, um, a creature can move through the wall, albeit slowly and painfully. For every one feet a creature moves through the wall, it must spend four feet of movement. Furthermore, the the first time a creature enters the wall on a turn or ends its turn there, the creature must make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. So if it stays there, it has to. Be hard. That shit went hard. I like it. Go again. Gotcha. Hezreen, you're up. Alright. Uh, I'm going to Thunderstep because I want to get next to Kalora. Cool. And he takes damp. He has to make a save to not take damage from you? Yes. So half damage. It's a con save of 15. Con save of 15. Uh, yeah, he gets exactly a 15. Alright, but. So what is it? 3D. Oh, so you guys can't see me, just so you know. All right, so 15 half, that's like, what, 7? Yeah. All right, but so I teleport. I'm going to be next to Kalora. Okay, perfect. Boom. Hey. You're next to Kalora, though you don't know she's where exactly she is, but you could hear her casting spells and stuff from this area, so you appear. No, he can see me. Wait, uh, you're still invisible? No, I casted spells, so that breaks okay. it. Never mind. All right. Bet, and I'm going to use my bonus action to do uh, healing light on here, which is just going to be uh, 2d6. Okay. And that's going to be exactly six points of healing. Perfect. Cool. Thank you. Of course. So I don't like the I don't like the fact that we were all split up, and then I um, I end my turn. Cool. All right. Next up is the uh, the large statue who is going to move out of the Wall of Thorns here Dang. and attack Hezrian. <sighs> 25 for the first strike. Oh, yeah. Okay. Take 21 points of damage with the first strike. Okay. And the second one is a 14 to hit. So you manage to, after taking this extreme blow directly to the chest, you get your Jesus. spear up and block it away. God the second dang. strike. <sighs> Alright. And then I need uh, everybody to make wisdom saving throws. Counter spell. It's not a spell, technically. It's an ability. That would be really cool, but <laughs> possible. 
wisdom save you said? So yeah. do I Six use feet. it? No, 17. you don't use it. Uh, well, it wasn't a spell that it could be used on, so I won't say you use it. Wait, so wisdom saves? Yeah, wisdom saves. What was yours, Kalora? 17. 17. You just save. Oof. 22. You save? Eight. Tito, you still rolling an advantage here? Yeah. Jesus. Sorry. Okay. 16. No. 16? You fail, Tito. You are now slowed again. <laughs> oh, poor guy. Next up is the uh, stone defender, the female, and she's going to destroy this uh, uh, bust to get over to Tito. And she's going to take two strikes at Tito, since he's by himself. I can't do any reactions, right? Nope. Right. First one is a 22 to hit. I die. Not die. Yes. Gotcha. Okay, so that is eight points of damage with the first strike as she okay. hits you with her staff. The second one's a 13 to hit. Hits. 13 Ooh. hits? Yeah, because it's minus two AC. Right, because you're slow. Right. You ha take 11 points of damage with the second strike. And her face, as she strikes you, is completely impassive. It has the same look of um, almost joy and longing as it had when she looked at the stone statue before she started moving. Back at the top of the round, Tito, you're up. Um, I've been thinking to myself uh, over the course of this fight, do I know anything about, like, if these guys are, like, like who, what these guys, like, these things are, like, if they're, like, human related at all or elvish related or gnomish related they both appear to be human okay. hmm. uh, uh. fireballer <laughs> i don't know what to do fireballer uh, okay she's uh, looking rough That's, I can't really, like, do that. Oh. Can I? Without hurting myself? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can. You can center it right here, for instance, and it would just hit her. See? Yeah. You guys can see this big fireball I'm fucking around with, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so you could just do that, and it would hit her here. Fireball's great, because you can center it anywhere. You don't have to yeah. center it on a person. Uh, cool. I am back. You know what? I I do it. I send the fireball back there. Okay. Uh, between her legs. It's like the fireball, uh this streak of light hits the floor behind her and explodes into a bursting sound of flame and wind. Uh she's gonna make her deck save. That is a f f f f fourteen, I think. Let me check. 14? Yep. Yes! Good shit. Hell yeah. Okay, so what do I do? What do I do? Slash roll? Slash roll 8d6? Is that right, Narkrin? Yeah, it's slash roll 8d6. That did not work. Slash roll space 8d6. Copy pasta. 18 points of damage. Okay. So many ones. So yeah. many twos. I hate roll 20 She's dice. looking incredibly right. rough, but she is still standing as we come to Kalora's turn. Can I try to get out of the stupid thing? Yes, please do. Eighteen. You are freed from slow. Ugh. All right, so I am going to run forward. And I want to try and take my flame blade, jump, and 
Hit him. How high up am I? I should ask that first. Uh, you're like 10 feet up on the dice. Mm, no, I don't want to do that. Okay. Um, okay, then I am going to... I'm actually going to drop my moonbeam. Your moonbeam? I mean my um, flame blade. Oh, okay. And I will cast moonbeam on that guy. Okay. At third level. Okay, sounds good. Constitution save. 23. Fuck. Half of 21. So 10. And then, yeah. 10 points of damage. And that's radiant damage. I don't know if that matters. Yeah, I know. And then... That's my turn. Okay. Hezrigan, you're up. Uh, could I move, or would I have to like disengage? Uh, you can move. You'll take an attack of opportunity if he decides to strike you, though. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna drop hunger if I dart on him. Okay. Sounds good. What's the save? Uh, deck save 15. Deck save. All right. He rolls a natural 20. Of course. Uh, so with that being like, would they still be up, or he and he just doesn't take damage right now, or does the spell save? Because it's not really specific in the They're still up. I guess he wouldn't take damage right now. Okay, cool. So I guess when he uh, when he takes damage from uh, the beginning, the start to end of his turn. Yeah. All right. Let me just and... look up under a Hadar to be certain, because it, it doesn't say he takes half damage or anything, right? No. I put it in the roll twenty thing, chat. Thank you, Reed. Look at you, Reed. Look at you. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, no save. He just takes damage if uh, if he starts his turn there, basically. So he'll take damage when he starts his turn. All right, bet. Uh, can I move like ten feet, bet? I will take that attack of opportunity. Go for it. Wouldn't I have to move and like, doesn't he have to make an attack on me? If you move, yeah. He can, okay. He can choose to. You don't know whether he will or not. True. I'm gonna move okay. over here. All right. So you kind of clamber over the uh, throne to get over there. And as you're clambering over, he is gonna take an attack of opportunity on you. All right. It's 13 to hit. You manage to just dive out of the way. He slams down on the top of the throne, cracking the stone underneath his sword. Yes, sir. All right. Is that your turn? And that, yeah, that ends my turn. All right. It's now his turn, so go ahead and roll damage for Hunger Fadar. And my Moonbeam, he has to make another con save. He gets uh, four points of cold damage. Okay. Oh, Matt. The same thing again. 21, so half. Uh, 10. 10. Nice. He's getting damage. Yeah, Tito, what's up? Um, did anything happen to those smaller statues when I no. hit the leaf Bible? They just it it got destroyed when this guy walked through it. That's basically all that happened. They're just statues, it appears. Gotcha. Okay, so on his turn, he is going to step forward onto the dais with you, just kind of raising one giant leg. Ah! Combat range with both of you. God, He's oh going God. to attack uh, Kalora. No. Is it 20 to hit the first one? Yes. Okay. Oof. Uh, there we go. I'll just roll and roll 20. Okay. 
That's not right. Why is he rolling 68? Uh, it's supposed to be 3d8, so. Uh, so you take 20 points of damage the first strike. God damn. He's gonna try to hit you again. Oh. I'd say 27 to hit the second one. Yeah. Round. Take 24 points of damage with the second strike. I am unconscious. Okay, and Kalora goes unconscious. He's also going to try to slow Hezrian and Tito because he unbelievably recovered again. So go ahead and make your wisdom saves. Um, 15. 15, Hezrian, you are slowed. Nice. More plate. I saw the first one, Tito, was in the... Actually, no, wait, no, it's a 13, right? Uh, 13 plus 5. Oh, okay, both of you are fine. 18, yeah. 13 plus 5, so... Yeah, it looked yeah. like a 9. Not today, Missy. You guys are both fine, we'll see if he recovers that. Alright. Next up is the female, who, with her uh, severely damaged form, is going to try to attack Tito again. Uh, he still has to take damage for Hunger of Padar as well. Yeah, because he's still in the range. But he took it at the top of his turn, so it'll be on the top of his next turn that he'll take No, it. there's one at the end. No, it's also, if end. you end your turn there. Start and end? Wow. You have yeah. to make a dexterity saving throw. Yeah, a dexterity save. Okay. Two. Huh? It was two. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, five points of uh, acid damage. Oh, right, because it does acid too. Right, right, right. Okay. Tito, she's going to attack you with her staff. The first one is a 26 to hit. Uh, it's... It's 12 points of damage with the first strike. <gasps> she's going to hit you again, or try to. That's another 26 to hit. Wait, what is it? 26? 26 to hit. It's... 11 points of damage with the second strike. <laughs> That's her turn. Tito, you're up. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 Kalora is uh, Wall of Thorns concentration. Yes. All right, so that dropped. All right. Um, it actually would have dropped when I cast Moonbeam anyway. So. Oh, okay. I cast. Uh, healing word first onto Kalora. Okay. I'm not gonna hit you. Bang. Nice. Eight. Thank you. Nice. And then I will say, Get away from me! And I will cast this in a whisper on you. Okay, that's a save. Yeah, wisdom save. Wisdom save. Let's see what your stats. Natural 20. Damn. Well. Uh, um, if I can, I uh, I can't use a reaction on a uh, attack of a right. Well, if she attacks you, you could have used your reaction, but you forgot. No, I'm saying like if uh, if I try to leave and she takes an attack of opportunity, can I use my reaction? Oh yeah, on that? absolutely. You get your reaction back at the top of your turn. So yes. Um, I, five, ten, I'll attempt, oh god, uh, 
I'll help me, and I will move right here and not take it. Okay. Yeah, she's you're still in her combat range, so no no attack of opportunity there. Kilora, you are prone on the ground, having just recovered from fainting. You've got uh, severe damage to your body going on right now. You're in a lot of pain, but you are up and conscious. What would you like to do? Oh, man. I am going to try something risky. Okay. Risky business. I'm going to try and dispel magic on this statue. Okay. What level? Fourth. Fourth. You feel the spell begin to take effect in the statue itself and then dissipate. How do you know? Because it's a, a lot higher level enchant than that. Okay, but if it's any spell of fourth level or higher, you make an ability check using your spell casting ability. Oh, okay. Go for so it. that's what I was, yeah. Um, Cook that shit up. Okay, so it says for each spell of fourth level or higher on the target, make an ability check using your spell casting ability. The DC equals 10 plus the spell's level. Yeah. So, so what's is it the spell level I'm casting dispel magic at? No, the spell that enchanted this thing basically okay that's the dc i can't look oh, i'm sorry wait using wait your so spell you roll d20 and add your spell casting ability modifier okay 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 okay, okay. 17 all right, so that would be a DC, or that would be a seventh level spell. Is that right? I, I, I don't I don't know. All right, let me. Yes. <laughs> yes, that would, that would be no, because that would be ten plus seven. Yeah. Yeah, so it would be a seventh level spell that this was able to dispel. Yeah. Yep. All right. You don't have any inspiration. It does not. Like do I have inspiration still? Yes. Yeah, you, you do. do. You do. Okay, I'm gonna add my inspiration to it. You guys are actually gonna make me look up what level it took to. Uh, yes. Create this goal one. All right. Let's see. Um, what's the do, uh, the inspiration? It's a D six or D eight. Nice. <laughs> okay. 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 Come on. Twenty three. Oh. In your thirteenth level spell. <laughs> <laughs> We're not in Pathfinder. <laughs> I don't think thirteenth level spells. Okay. Exist. Yeah. I just I just looked at the. The rules though for this and i shouldn't have had you roll at all um oh. dispel magic ends spells on its target a golem is not a spell so dispel magic can't neutralize it that's from jeremy crawford uh, one of the writers oh. so, sorry you can do something else you do not lose the spell slot because you i don't do that. are no, you sure you would, you would know not to do that so i'm, I'm gonna that's my bad because okay. I, I said i told you to roll so you still okay. have bardic inspiration okay so i still have my bardic inspiration Correct. Yes, ma'am. um I'm going to look up to Hesrian and say, get Tito, heal Tito, and I'm going to try and just cast my fourth level Moonbeam on him again. Okay, cool. Okay. Dex save? Con. Oh, con. Nine. Yes! Let's go. 4d10. Mm-hmm. Nine plus two is eleven plus seven is eighteen plus ten. Twenty-eight points of damage. Twenty eight nice. points of damage. All right. He is uh starting to show some signs of wear. There are cracks appearing on him. You might say he is bloodied. Okay. And I'm just gonna look up at Astrid and say, ouch. <laughs> okay. Oh man. Hezrian, you're up. All right, so, so I'm going to go over to Tito. Actually, not even. Um, I'm just going to use my bonus action. Healing Light. Uh, 3d6. Okay. 
on Tito. It's in, it's up to 60 feet, so I'm good. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, 14 points of healing. <gasps> nice. Okay. And then... I'm gonna try to cast Guiding Bolt on it. Wait, hey. What's up? Apparently, if for Dissonant Whispers, if they save, they take half the damage. You cast Hypnotic Pattern, not Dissonant Whispers. No, he cast a Dissonant no, Whispers. He ca yeah, he cast Dissonant Whispers. He but cast I said, away from me. earlier. That was just my last spell. His last spell was Dissonant Whispers, 100%. Yeah, his last spell was Dissonant Whispers. I don't remember when he... I did healing word on the floor. Sure. Get away from me. No, it was, it was just this past round. Yeah. Yeah, it was the last round. Okay. Sure. Uh, go ahead and what was the what was the damage? It's, sorry. Okay. Oh god, what if it kills it? I'll feel so bad. Uh seven. Seven. The female golem crumbles to dust. <laughs> Let's go. Good shit, Tito. Hell nice, Tito. I feel so bad. I feel Don't feel no. bad. That's how the spell works. It happens. No big deal. Yay for reading. Alright. And I casted a guiding bolt on the dude. Okay. And that was a 25 to hit. 25 definitely hits. Uh, 21 points of damage. Damn. All right. Is that your turn? And, uh... Yeah, that's gonna end my turn. All right. Sounds good. The golem is going to step between the two of you get over here to be in combat range with all of you and he's going to attack Tito twice so is that the beginning of his turn he still takes damage for Hunger of Hadar yes and Moonbeam and, and Moonbeam he needs to make a con save for me what the oh cause probably, probably his like children uh nat 1 woo he gets 11 points of uh ice damage from Hunger of Hadar oops Uh, 14 points of damage from uh, Moonbeam. So, Tito, as he approaches you and begins to raise his weapon to attack you, you can see that the mask of pure calm that was on his face before the uh, female statue was destroyed is now a face of immeasurable rage. His teeth are bared and his eyebrows are furrowed as he goes to attack you. Uh-oh. First one's a 15 to hit. 15? Yep. Like, no, you don't. The rat L use a cutting word. Okay. That's, I roll 1d8, so I guess I was automatically. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I roll 1d8, so I, I, I'm at my AC is 14. Mm -hmm. so I, oh, bet. Hey, thanks for cooking that. Your AC is <clears throat> 14? What? I don't understand what you're what you're asking me. For Bardic, like when I do that, do I add, um, do I add it for the rest of the that so It's doesn't that subtract it by eight with cutting words? You need to roll at least a two. And he rolled an eight. Oh, oh, I, it's minus eight. I thought it adds it to my AC. But... No, so he doesn't hit him. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sorry, I had no idea what cutting words did, so that's my bad. Um, he's going to take a second strike against you now. 29 to hit. I think it hit. All right. Mm -hmm. 
take 22 points of bludgeoning damage as his sword comes up and smacks you in the back, uh, kind of wrapping around your body and pu pushes you to the ground. Ow! You kind of go back down to one knee and then stand back up without going prone or anything. Top of the round, Tito, you're back up. Let's get it, Tito. Oh. Are you still up, Tito? Yeah, are you still up? Yes. Oh Barely. God. I cast Tasha's hideous laughter on him. Wisdom save. Uh, let me look up if he would be affected by that. Oh, if his intelligence score is four or less, it's not affected. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me just look, make sure everything. Please. Work. Please. Okay. Yeah, okay. He fails and falls oh. prone. That's fucking nice. Bro. He's okay. not laughing, but he does fall prone. Uh, uh. Okay. I go and get the ring. Okay, I mean, it's can currently I do that? gripped around something. His fist is fully closed. You can try to make a strength save to open his fist. Okay. Like <laughs> I didn't realize he would be fisted. Well, and it kind of, I mean, I, I hate to be the rule person, but isn't it an action to yeah. try and do something like that? Yes. Yeah, probably. All right. Um, I will uh, bonus action healing word myself uh, at second level. Yes, that's the better decision. <laughs> <laughs> we can't have two people dead. Yeah. Very exciting battle. All right. Uh, and I say... Uh, get the ring. Okay. If you can. To my partners. Glory Leaf, you are up. Alright, I'm gonna move my moonbeam over to him. Okay. That's gonna take off hideous laughter, just so you save know. Save is 19. Why is it gonna take off hideous laughter? It makes your wisdom save at the end of each of his turns to. Or when he takes damage to get rid of hideous laughter. I want to kill him. Yep. <laughs> what was that? Oh, well, he's grown. I think he said 19. Yes. Oh, man. I rolled three threes and a two. So it's 11. So five points damage. Five. That's a blame. Okay. And he's going to make a wisdom save. Tito, that is a 14. Uh, uh, that failed. Okay, so he's still prone. Nice. Edrian, you're up. Or unless, or do you have a bonus action or something? Like uh, that? no, I don't have a bonus ma a bonus action, but I am just going to try and move right there. But since he's prone, he can't technically really get an attack on me, right? Uh, he could try. Yes. But okay. Well, then I'll stay there because that's still in his combat, I assume. That's it. Okay. Hezrian, you're up. Alright. I'm gonna do uh first level inflict wounds. Okay. Oh, I have advantage because he's prone, right? Yeah. Twelve, 
So 19 to hit. That hits. points of damage. 11 points of damage. All right. So make another wisdom save. 17. Yeah, he saves. Okay. Sorry, how much damage was that? 11. 11. Sorry, I didn't take it down. No, you're good. Perfect. All right. Back up to the stone golem's turn. God, he has to make a con there? save. Ah. He's going to make a con save. That is 19. Okay. Again. Uh, damn. He's rolling really well, and he's got a good con modifier. Bye, um, guys. He's going to stand. Twenty-three. So what's half of twenty-three? Eleven. Okay. He's going to attack Tito again. Whoa. Uh oh. It's a twenty twenty-five to hit. Yeah. Fifteen points of damage with the first strike. What happened? Fifteen points of damage. And then I die. Oh no. Okay. And he is going to take a second strike at you. Oh shit. Fuck. Fuck. It's an auto crit. Um, if it hits. 16. If only I could use my reaction. Okay. Take 18 points of damage. It's two death saves. No, no. Tito Tiller. <clears throat> Tito Tiller. <laughs> oh my god. You guys watch as as soon as Tito goes down with that second strike, the uh, aggressive face of the stone golem goes back to the passive uh, blank expression it had before the female golem was destroyed. He avenged his lover. Top of the round. Tito. Fuck. Make a death save. God. No. Oh, shit. No. Wait. <laughs> Roll 20 dice. <laughs> Don't let me down. Roll in person, bro. <laughs> oh. 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 Damn. I thought it was a 7, and I so saw it. Oh my god. <sighs> that Jesus was too close. Christ. Jesus Christ. Fuck. Leaf. You're up. Fuck. Motherfucker, man. Okay. Um... <clears throat> If I move up to Tito, am I still within his yeah. attacking range, so I'm not leaving? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on Tito. At third level. Okay. <laughs> Seventeen points of healing. Oh God, bless you, Jesus. Okay. <sighs> okay. And uh, I'm coming back to life. I go back there. All right, Hezrian, you're up. Uh, dog. <laughs> Kill him. Kill him. Um, Recruit this man to be part of the rising uh, channel. Alright. Alright, I'm use my last first level. And do, um... Another inflict wounds. Okay. Eight. 
18 hit. 18 hits? Six, actually nine plus six plus ten. Nine plus six plus ten. Damn. Yeah. Fuck. That's a hell of a first level spell. Three D ten. All right. Let's see. Hezrian, how do you want to do this? <laughs> oh, fucking shit. So I'm just like in a panic, right? I'm just like palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. Like <laughs> I just like I just rub my hands together, touch this man's leg, and I cast inflict wounds. You see the black necrotic energy just like engulfing this fucking statue, man. Yeah, as soon as you touch him on the leg, you see the that black energy jut into some existing cracks that exist on his legs and push them and open them wider apart. And it continues in that same fashion all the way up his legs, up halfway through the torso before hit the entirety of the statue bursts outward from the force of the necrotic energy. It uh, collapses, and all that's really left of it is the, the head from the shoulders up. The rest is dust and rubble. That's the way to kill him. I get up and look at Tito and Narfrin and say Narfrin? Narfrin. I'm sorry, uh, Nazarin. <laughs> in names, you know. Um, I'm really glad I didn't come down here alone. Oh, you, do. you and me oh, both praise I, Onatar. I quickly look for anything valuable other than the ring. Alright, well, I get the ring. Okay. Go ahead and, uh, well, yeah, you can, you can just pick up the ring. His hand shattered when it hit the ground, so you can easily pick up the ring. It's a silver ring with uh, elven script going around the outside, and a ruby. Sitting I, I grip onto it as tightly as I possibly can. Okay. I'm going to put a uh, first level cure wounds into myself. All right. Uh, I say we get out. As Same. Fast as possible. Can we dimension door out? Then someone, the someone with the mention door, come back and get the other person. And I get mean, out. we did say actually. Uh, spill I mean, I can just shape change into a spider and put yeah. myself in your bag. Oh yeah, I forget. Or like a rat. Or Tito can turn the door up. Is that right. uh, is that okay, Matt? Or yeah, it's fine. You're gonna you say that's okay. Out? I'm gonna change into a chipmunk. All right. Okay. No exploring. Are we get Are we getting out, or are we just leaving? Yeah. I mean, what are we doing? All right. Is so, there anything clearly valuable? Nothing that you can see in this room. There were four rooms you didn't go into up top, and three rooms you didn't go that into at the bottom. But you guys can just leave. Absolutely. Tito almost just died. Shady, you're trying to just leave? You're trying to dip? Uh huh. <laughs> All right, bet. I mean, I don't, I don't think we need to be down here without yep. the rest of our party. Correct. Exactly. I'm tapped. Our Why the soul. hell is that in their basement? Because they are worship. The family used to be worshippers <laughs> of Kelimvor. Mm. <sighs> With that being said, I use the amulet, or you and don't. I can envision the uh, the top of the bell tower where I just was, and I can just teleport there, right? Yes, absolutely. All so, right, and I do that. <clears throat> uh, clock tower group. You guys have been hanging out for some time down here. Um, probably about 30 minutes. Um, who is up at the top of the clock tower right now? I know Zaffir uh, and Narfrin. Narfrin are four is down at the bottom in between the two houses. Brad and Clarible. Zaffir was there. downstairs outside the church. Oh, uh, okay. Well, oh, well did he, he went go back, back down there? Because he, he uh, cast Cat's Grace on Oh yeah, true. I thought Hezrin stayed. Nope, you're right. He's up yeah. in the bell tower. Okay. You're up in the bell tower. So Claire Bold and B Rat, are you guys downstairs communing with your god? Yeah, I'm uh I'm praying for the safety. Okay. Core, what are you doing? Just hanging out? I'm just hanging out waiting for a signal. Okay. 
So you guys, uh, those of you that are at the top of the clock tower core, you standing up there after probably about, I would say that probably took 30 minutes, um, you hear or you see in front of you that spectral door appear. And the door swings open and stepping through you, victorious, you can see a very battered Tito, Lex and a, or Lex, sorry, uh, Kalora and a generally pretty okay Hezrian. <laughs> Laura is very bruised and battered. She's bleeding from several places on her arms and face. Uh, Tito looks like he's seen a ghost. He's got two black eyes. Um, and he's got a, a cut along his uh, the right side of his arm, and it kind of cuts down into his, uh, his ribs. But they come out, and they all look to be... I don't know. How do you guys look? I'm, I'm looking about third of the way healthy. So I mean, like, in terms of uh, demeanor. I'm kind of like really like just shocked and like just like kind of sad because I lost my wire and I didn't go back for it at all, didn't like try to retrieve any pieces. I am the opposite. You're I'm, not sad about his liar. I'm not <laughs> sad about his liar. That shit. Uh, no, I'm just not. I'm like kind of just like this is what I was expecting and yeah. as soon as I see people I'm like we have it we have to get to the tower well I'm just like kind of like shocked like that it actually happened it actually just happened like we finally got this shit the three of us you know I got hit once and I'm just like kind of limping from that one pretty hard blow. Yeah. But then seeing everyone, you know, just kind of like snap back to reality. Just like, oh, you know, we gotta, we gotta dip out. We gotta go to the tower. Just like what Kalora said, we gotta go, go, go. I'm gonna kneel down really quick and just hug Tito and Kalora. And when I hug them, I'm gonna pump them with two cure wounds, each of them. Okay. Is Kalora still a chipmunk? Yep. Okay. That's why. Right. I'm a pit monk. Oh, okay. I don't see Kalora, I guess. I, I'll pump Tito for full of two Oh, no, I scurried wounds. up Tito's shoulder. Okay, so Kalora the chipmunk, sorry, is bleeding from several chipmunk places. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I got my cheeks full, like, <laughs> of blood. Blood. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I just look into Narfer's eyes, and I'm just like, why the hell do they have that crap in their basement? I can't believe it. I actually can't believe it. Uh, Tito, you get 25 healing. Oh, thank you so much. I pop out of Chipmunk Kalora. I'm a real boy again. Did I see them apparate from the ground? Yeah. Okay, so Tito gets 25, Kalora gets 20. Thank you. Thanks for giving me more narf ring. <laughs> Thanks for giving me less narf. <laughs> Shit, I don't get a hug. I mean, I don't need help. I just like hugs. I'll give Hezrian a hug too. But I won't Shit, give him no cure, cure wounds. wounds. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't need it. Not to sound dragon, but... How do they look after the cure wounds? Because this effort was going to heal them too. How do you yeah, I also have healing as well. I'm looking okay. You're not down there though. Or, or up there, but... Yeah. Well, oh, it's after that. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna do a uh, mass healing word to give all of them some health as soon as they pop up. Okay. So you all get six healing from that. Nah, uh, I got a question. Shoot. Take it. Can I cast spells through my familiar? Uh, touch spells. Yes. Okay. I'm running. Everybody, let's get to the tower. Let's see. Yes. I don't know if we're even going to be able to go, but... We should at least try. Morgan? Yeah. We should probably grab everybody that's involved, right? But everybody can't go in the tower, right? We can't go in the tower? I can't. The ones that can't go, I guess we can wait outside. Do you guys want to go get Logan and meet us at the front of the tower? Sure. 
I can send them a message if that works. I can... Oh yeah, that works too. Sounds good. Do you think I can just be like, well, I killed these, we, I fate, I fought these uh these giant golems. Can I be in with my magic? Probably not. But Good. maybe now we can retake the tests. Yeah. That'd be very nice. Now I'm gonna send a message a... to Logan Singh to meet us at the tower, and I'm also gonna send a message to Veronin. Okay. And tell him to wait for us in the lobby. He messages back. Uh, I'll meet you on the bridge. Perfect. You guys and... begin heading there. Oh, Logan, what do, what, what do you send to Logan? Me? Is they got the ring. You, um, you and Lex meet us at the tower. Alright, and I'll grab Lex and be like, hey, we have to go to the tower. Um, Wait, but we're still trying to finish this. Yeah. <laughs> Have we finished it? No, definitely not. Definitely <laughs> not. What are you doing? If we You'll stop see. and we It's go a work down, in progress. We can take a break, right? Can we? Yeah, okay, just put in your bag. Let's go. All right. All right, tuck it in my backpack. So everyone begins making their way towards the tower bridge. Uh, and uh, that, we're going to take still, a 10 minute break because I'm still really in front afraid. of the. the... Oh, nobody's told Core what's going on yet. <laughs> also, I don't have a stick. Where is Core? Stick would have come back to you after I dropped him off. Yeah, I would say Stick came back to you after he dropped him off. Okay. He, was, he just dropped me off outside the house. Okay. Core, let's go. Yeah, he was just out front. Just grab his ass. Yeah, if I saw them apparate and I knew and I had Stick back, I would have headed toward him. Okay. Cool. So they meet you at the the entrance to the church. Oh, I was um, worried I was going to lose the squirrel. Clara Bold and Brad as well, right? Yeah. And we get begin making our way towards the uh, the tower. I'm just going to pee real quick. We can take like a five minute break. Not allowed. Gosh, Matt. Jesus, Matt. Jesus. Can't handle this. That was a pretty high pass. I'm too old for this shit. Kita, you really had to uh, cast all your spells, didn't you, man? I have one first level spell, one second level spell, and that's it. Yeah, man. Yeah. Kito, I thought you were a goner a, a few times. Me too. Oh, and where is he? Is is what's his face here? Narfarin? What? <laughs> face Narfarin? <laughs> where the fuck He he said. Remember, uh, remember you have the shield ring to me. I'm like, oh, I remember. <laughs> I know I have the shield ring. This is the one time I could finally use it. I was within one of, like, blocking his attack, so it was better to use cutting words. Dang. Holy crap. Sorry. But yes, we put up a pool in the backyard today. Yeah, I didn't know you already had the pool. I just thought you guys were already digging. <laughs> my my body no, aches. Yes, I am so sore. Well, we gotta work out. Yeah, yesterday we worked out before digging out an 18 foot hole. Nice. Because we're dumb. Yeah, we like okay. we worked out and we showered. Did a full core workout and then showered and then dug for three yeah, hours. Yeah, then we realized, like, hours. oh shoot, yeah, we're supposed to dig. Huh. Yep, that was a very smart move. Yep, I. Would agree. You should do it again and again. I was planning I, on it. I I was thinking about uh trying suggestion on the one with the ring. Wonder if it would have worked. Mm. I don't know no. if you'd be that charming to a golem. Uh, because like, <laughs> I could have been like, I'm the owner. You Give mean... me the ring, please. I don't know if it's an owner. I think it's more of like a god thing. I'm so, the god. I mean, you impersonated a god before, so it wouldn't be a far stretch. <laughs> it's like nothing was working. I was like, what, how, how, what am I supposed to do? I wonder how much progress we made, Melody. I don't know. Yeah, are you I, not I very fast. Are you not reading your enchanting book? Nope. We have another plan. Another plan. It's brilliant. Yes. 
I love it. But it's actually super useful. So yes, absolutely. I've been meaning excited to, for it. Like I've been meaning to like ask you to do it, like help me do it. But at the same time, it's like, when are we ever gonna? This have is to a perfect do time to do it. Yes. <laughs> no, you'll find out. <laughs> You can tell Andrew. It's fine. He's so, do you see how sad he is? You can tell him. He's so upset. Just make sure you mute the mic or whisper. Okay. He likes it. <laughs> oh, no. I'm drinking this white claw for Tito. And all the ones he rolled for fireball damage. That was like some of the dumbest crap ever. <laughs> hey, bro, yeah. you, sh you just gotta learn to roll on roll 20, bro. Yo, hey, did you hear what I said about the shield ring thing you told me? No. What? no. Alright, well, I, 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 well, I was well aware of I had shield, shield ring. It's just he was rolling 26s and 29s. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah, What's that shield ring do? What's that shield ring do? Uh, it casts a shield spell as a reaction or without like using a spell slot, uh, which is plus five bonus to your AC. That's nice. Yeah. I got it very early in the campaign from a random man, from old bones. Old bones. Old bones. <laughs> Oh, back in the day. That feels like such a long time ago. Back in Neverwinter, man. Back when I had my liar. <laughs> I, I have a video to show to, to show you guys. Uh, give me a second. What are you eating? Are you eating something, Hezbo? What do you got? Yo, what you eating, dog? Yo, I got some pizza, bro. Yo, yo, yo. Hey, bro, what kind of pizza, bro? A supreme pizza, dog. It's from Sam's Club. I baked it myself. Hey, Enjoy. Sam's Club. That's what's up. You know that Good pizza's big. Man. What kind of hot sauce? It's actually sriracha mayonnaise. Ooh, that's good. Oh, Sam. <laughs> Mad fucking jealous right now. I ain't got no pizza. I had one of those healthy pizzas earlier. It smacked. Yeah. Oh, I did make... those healthy pizzas? Those joints smacked. Yeah, the, the protein lover one. Yeah. That shit goes hard. And I am going to eat some uh, pancakes later. I made my own syrup today. Mm. Ooh. Did you eat syrup? Yeah, dog. Okay, Mrs. Buttersworth, I see you. I don't know if it's as good as Miss Buttersworth yet, but it was a good <laughs> Ben, I've missed your forehead tonight. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Is everybody back? No, Nathan's not. Wait on no, Nate. Oh, fucking Nate. Trying to find out what that ring does. I'm waiting for us to try and hand it through the gate to Veronin and we just all fucking die. TPK. Yeah. Except for Lex. <laughs> we all roll new characters and she's like, Yo, I don't know where they went. I haven't seen them for like weeks. They just vaporized. I, mean, to be fair, I did suggest an alternative where I get rid of the piece of paper that could have saved your lives, but... 
she's like, I don't know y'all new people, but y'all trying to roll with me? <laughs> <laughs> any, yeah. any of you uh, air or earth or water genasi? Fire not. We all roll up fire genasi? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Michael's like, I roll up and say my name's Flint, and I'm like, <laughs> You're muted, Mary. You're muted, Mary. I was just <laughs> saying the campaign just becomes us the army against uh, Lex. <laughs> I have so much hatred and resentment and animosity towards Flint. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll, I got a teleportation stone and some wizards. I'm good. I think everybody's back. You're muted, Matt. Oh, yeah, Nathan's back. Okay, cool. So, um,. Lex and Logan, you guys reach the uh, the tower wall first, and Baroni is there waiting uh, just inside of the uh, magical fence. Uh, where's everyone else? I should say no avoid meters here. Yeah, they're on their way. I think the mission was successful. That's what Logan told me. Fantastic. I do hope they will be able to... Uh... I hope we'll be able to do something. I'm not sure what to do, but we'll see. Uh, you guys wait probably another five, ten minutes before the rest of the group arrives uh, at the bridge. You guys are all together. Were you successful? Did you get it? Yeah. Here. I, I hold it like close to me. Fantastic. What's the plan? Uh, can I do an uh, insight check just to see if he he seems like he has any sinister motivation? Yeah, sure. It that took forever to send. Sorry. Nineteen. Nineteen. No, he he looks nervous, but he doesn't look like he has any sinister intent. Okay. Yeah, I showed him like. Like this, kind of close to me. Can so. you tell us what it does? Uh, if you oh my hand God, it over, I can. It'll take me ten minutes. Oh, God. Do we want to do it right? Oh, my God, I can't get back into Kalora. Do we want to do it right here in the open? Uh, it's up to you. Uh, I'm not sure we'll be able to take it into the tower. Let's okay. just do it. I think we do it. I think we do it too. All right, just uh, stand around me and hand me the ring. All right, I hand him the ring. Okay. As you go to hand it to him, uh, he's on the other side of the, the fence, and as you, it touches the fence, it won't go through the magical barrier. Oh wait, can I see that? I try to give him Tito. Uh. Veronin, were you going to cast Identify? Yes. I can try that if it's not able to pass through the barrier. All right, give it a shot. Uh, that does mean I won't be able to reproduce it, though, if it can't go through the barrier. Unless I... Well, I guess I could prob I could try examining it from a distance, but without knowing the magical intri intricacies, it might be difficult. You know what? I mean, this can is you come to this side of the barrier? Steps. Yeah, he, he just he stepped was, through. He, very reluctant to do so, but he did. Can I see it? I slowly try to give it to him, very nervously. Okay, and he takes it and begins ritually casting, or just casting identify on it, going through and beginning to uh, to ascertain its function. So is um, everyone there? Sorry, because my yeah. Wi-Fi gone. Okay. I'd like um, to it's just one look minute if he's it. casting it, by the way. Yeah, I know. One minute. I'd like to look around and see if anybody's watching us. Same. Okay. Both of you make perception checks. 21. 20. 20. 
uh, as you guys look around, you can see, of course, there are a few people making like uh, eye contact, like looking around uh, at you. I mean, you're a big group of odd people who are standing in front of a magic tower with the head wizard of the town, right? It attracts attention. Um, but looking at some of the rooftops, uh, Kalori, you notice it first and then point it out to Narfarin. Uh, Gisla is standing on a rooftop uh, probably Doc. about 150 feet away. Looking at you. You guys don't turn around, but uh, Gisla knows what we're doing. She's, she's watching. How does she even know we're here? She probably has some type of tracker on us. Well, the fact that she owns the majority of the people in the city. And well, that was a test that she gave us. Yeah, I mean... Also, good job, Hezrian. I high-fived you. <laughs> Thank you. Ow. 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 I mean, we're not doing anything against the contract. As long as we still bring her the ring. I mean, he is our teacher, so... Yeah. I'll just keep an eye on her. To a class. So, uh, See if she the, leaves. The, the minute goes by, and Bronin looks up, uh, having not heard anything you guys just said. This is, uh, this is incredible. Absolutely incredible. Uh, a, a, a wonder of the ancient age. My god. What does it do? Uh, well, it's not so much what it does, which is one thing, but, but what it is. This belong, this ring belongs to Kelimbor Lionsbane. Before he ascended to Godhood, <laughs> it's uh, the ring itself. It's uh, it unlocks uh, locks, any lock, even one magically sealed, uh, provided that the lock is made of iron. You knock the rock, the uh, ring against it, and the, the lock unlocks. Um, truly incredible. This is no wonder the thieves guild wants it. That makes sense. Yeah, take it back. The ring unlocks any lock. So what do you advise us to do, Veronin? Um, well, I'm somewhat relieved that it's not uh, a, a, a weapon of mass destruction, personally. Um, but it is incredible, and I would hate to see it in such hands, but... Well, if you Veronin, can give me a few days, I might be able to, to recreate the enchantment. Um, but we only had like a day and a half, unfortunately. And she knows that we're here. She's watching us right now. I see. Can I, um, Roman? Would him? this let people get into the tower? Uh, no, certainly not. Um, we it doesn't uh, it doesn't disable any magical effects used to ward doors. It would not disable this barrier behind us, for instance. Just iron Wait. locks. You know what it could do? What? It could open a lock to, I don't know, a little sealed basement sort of corridor thing that has a piece of parchment with all of our names on it while Gisla is standing over behind us. Do we know it's there, though? I don't think I want to make them enemies. Me neither. I don't think this is... I think we're... You say I don't see Gisela anymore? Yeah, she walked away. Ah. Okay. She left, guys. I don't know if you heard him, but Jamie wanted to insight check. Uh, yeah, I feel like just... On the Clarible, Clarible had heard him say, here, take it back. Um, and that kind of word. I just okay. want to insight check on that. Sure. Ooh, who took the ring back? Me, I guess? I'm sure he handed it back to Tito, right? Probably. Yeah. Oh, can I see that, Tito? Uh, sure. Because... Um, that's probably not a good idea. I was going mean... to stop that real quick. I'm looking at it. I'm not going to take it. At it. it uh, it's like, like a mocking thing. <laughs> What'd you say, Matt? Clearable, he doesn't seem to have any uh, ill intention for uh, handing the ring back. From what you can tell. Um, whoever's got it, the ring is called a ring of entry. I think we need to return. No, you broke up. I heard it's called Ring of Entry. Entry. Cool. Entry. Uh, Kelimbor's yeah. Ring of Entry. I'm changing it right now. I'd say Kelimbor's. I think we just need to bring this back to Gisla. I agree. Do we know what the Elven says on it? 
Yeah, am I able to read it? Uh, yes, you can. Let me tell you what it says. That is why I wanted the ring, just so we're aware, guys. Do, you, do any of y'all think the the family is the descendants of Kelimor? No, they're worshippers. They used to be. It says, I don't know, it's possible. It says Kelimbor Lionsbane, Lord of the Dead, and Judge of the Damned. I honestly think that the family might be trying to keep that part of their history secret, and that's why the father didn't want the son to go down there. Thanks, Matt. That might be a naive way of thinking, but... Yeah. Well, are we going to go take it? Is that the plan? I so. Ronan, I think oh. we need to just return this. I worry what they'll do with it, but I think they already have the capability to unlock doors. It's just this will make it easier. So, I, I think I agree. Thank you for your insight on the matter. I'm glad it'll be done. Do you think they want it to blackmail the family? More than... It's hard to say. More than just open a lock. Maybe we can ask her. Um, Ronan. Yes? N nobody can get behind that barrier except for anybody who's passed the test, correct? The anointed, yes. Okay, so you don't have, like, the guards or anybody that can come through, correct? No. Okay, just making sure if I'm gonna go with them to her um, that because you stepped a foot out they wouldn't come and try to harm you in any sort of way. They can't get in if they wanted to, but I don't think I've well, been seen. Well, you why I can't to... come with us to Gisla anyway. What? You can't come with us to Gisla. I can come to Gisla. I went to Gisla earlier. She didn't no, know. you can't yeah, be, part, you can't of be part of the mission. No, oh, she I, she I can't help. Anything. I can go. I'm gonna head back. Um, good luck. Oh, also, Vernon, you got a rat problem. Just that, yeah. That's what? <laughs> um. Oh wait. Look, I uh, and I just threw my bag real quick. I uh, made that um, circlet for you. And I hand him the mirror finish with the red speckles and shit. Ah. Ruby speckles. That's lovely, Dab. Thank you. Will, uh, go directly into my collection. By the way, you should make stronger floors in your forge. Why? Glad you like it. <laughs> well, you know, I was trying to forge, but there's no anvil, so it's like these floors have to be super strong. So, but then it broke, but Hezrian fixed it, so it's okay. That's true. I did fix it, and it broke it. Well, thank you for fixing it, Hezrian. As I said, Zaffa, we, we do all of our forging by magic. We have no need for anvil. Perhaps someday you'll learn. No, perhaps someday you will learn. Okay, guys, let's go to Gisela. Um, when they're leaving, I wanted to trail behind and ask for Ronan. When would it be possible for some of us to take the trials again? Well, now that the mourning period is over, um, I could prepare something as early as uh, tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I just like, I fought these things and I got this ring from these big goblin guys with these two people and they're in the tower. And like, you know, I made all of us turn invisible. Tito, do you really want to cheat your way in or do you want to get it on merit? Both. All right, let's go to Gisela. I'll see you tomorrow, Veronin. Me see you then. Meet us in Parliament at five, same as last time. Sounds good. Well, I'm coming back at five today, and I'll also tell you about the rat problem, but I'll go with them first. Please. Thank you. Okay. And then I'm like, Tito, do you want this ring back? Yes, please. As great as this is, I just feel like I don't need it. All it's going to do is make my life that much easier. i got to keep my skills sharp. <laughs> okay. Uh... I hold on to it as tightly as possible. 
Or should I put it in my bag? What do you guys think? Put it in my bag. What happened to your liar? I threw it against the wall. Um, I don't know why. I went to the room and I just like did it uncontrollably. It's into a hole in the wall, actually. A hole in the wall. Well, that shit. It's yeah. a story. It was really sad, actually. I like that liar. It kind of grew with me. We'll get you a new one. Okay. So you guys start heading towards uh, the West Bazaar and Oceans of Potions. Um, making your way, the city is as busy as it usually is at a time like this around, uh, I don't know, it's probably, what, 11, 12? Somewhere around there. And uh, the Bazaar is, is somewhat bustling. There's a lot of uh, people trading, uh, enjoying the lovely day outside. It's nice and sunny. Uh, doesn't seem to be any alarm that's been raised for anything, a theft or anything of that sort. Um, you eventually make your way to Potions and Potions. Give me one sec. Ah, okay. Um, and you make your way to Oceans and Potions, Oceans of Potions, and Gisela is there, um, standing in front of the, uh, the cart, all the bottles arrayed behind her, and standing next to her, looking at you, is an older dwarf with patches of gray uh, running through his auburn beard. He's wearing black studded leather armor and a black cowl that masks the top of his face. He has two daggers on his sides, um, and some vials across his belt of, uh, of various liquids. Do they look like poison to me? Make a... Make an intelligence check and add your proficiency modifier. Okay. God damn it. No. Make a proficiency plus three. Does, just from looking at them, uh, would I be able to tell... He's in charge, or is Gisela in charge? Can I make any sort of distinction with their body language? Make an insight check. Um. Okay, so it's 16 plus 3, so 19. 19? Yeah, some of them are definitely poisons. You can't really identify all of them, but they have uh, similar types of bottles to poisons that you've seen at Gisela's shop and stuff like that. Gotcha. Oops, I think I rolled twice. Fuck. I rolled a 5 and then a 1. Really hard to tell. Unfortunately, <laughs> they both look like stoic and they're both staring at you as you walk up, uh, arms crossed. Uh, Gisela's arms are crossed. She's got one hand on her side. Um, but the guy's arms are just crossed like this. He's probably around three and a half feet tall, huge, stocky. Um, you guys walk up and Gisela greets you. <clears throat> well, how did we do? I think you know. We did good. I need my reparations, though. <laughs> Can I have the ring? Um, I like look to the group. What are your for, like, What are your intentions with this ring? Why do you want it so bad? It's really none of your. Can you guarantee that this will fulfill the contract? Oh, that we can do. Can you get the contract? The dwarf kind of reaches in uh, a pack he's got slung across I'll his side insight, check that. and holds it up, just unfurls it in his hands like this, give you guys time to see it, and then closes it back up. It looks to be the the, the one, the contract, with all of your names signed in blood. Hmm. If we hand this over, the contract is destroyed? Yeah. Null and void, says the dwarf. Insight check. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to insight check it from when I asked that. Sure, well, both of you can. 20. 25. 25. Um, he seems reluctant, but uh, forthright. 
Like maybe he doesn't really want to tear the contract up, but he will. Gotcha. You didn't think we could do this. <clears throat> well, I always hope for the best in things like this. Uh, an optimist. And look at you. You came around the other side. Uh, relatively unscathed from the looks of it. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Good. Glad to hear it. Uh, let's have that ring. Wait, is the where's did you put the contract away again? It's right here. Okay, cool. I look up for like confirmation to the group. Tito, give it to her and let's be done with this. All right. Now give her the ring. She takes the ring. Kind of shaking. The dwarf takes a step forward and pulls the. Uh, well, he just got it in his hand. He takes the contract and puts it in your hand, Tito. Uh, fireball. Oh, that fireball. Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I'm just I'm like fire, fireballing the paper. How do, how, do we, how do we destroy this? What is, what ends this? Fireworks, fine. Anyone? Anyone You're looking at it, Genasi. I don't have fire. Burn it, Tito. I can't burn it. You don't have firebolt? <laughs> Any... I use I use firebolt in the contract. Okay, it starts smoking and eventually catches, uh, leaving an acrid smoke trailing up into the sky. The flames burn red and then green as it finishes up. It burns all in the span of about a second, leaving just motes of dust swirling away in the wind. All right. So we're done. That's that. That's it. So, the dwarf steps up. If you're ever looking for work, you know where nope, to find Nope, we're us. good. Hey, if you're ever looking for work... Tito. He... <laughs> he turns and walks back behind the cart. Kiesel just leads up against it. Can, can I look for any markings on... Uh, d does he have any markings, like, as he steps up and then he would turn away? Is there any special markings on anything... Uh, Make a perception check. It's taking some god damn. Damn. No, you can't see anything. <laughs> Fuck. I'm gonna walk away. Okay. I'm gonna go find Shadow. I'll and leave read a away. drink from Cosbros. Yeah, I follow Narfrin. If anybody wants to spot me money, that'd be cool. I'm broke. I'm, I need a fucking nap. Before no, I... What time is it, Matt? He said, like, noon. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Before I walk away, I... I want everybody else to walk away from the area. And I'll just be, like, the last to leave, and I look at Gisela, and I say... I would have honestly hung closer back. I would have gave a taunting like wave and smile because I fucking hate Kisa. Yeah, I'm but gonna... be but because of what Core did, I would have waited until the whole group was gone. Okay, but so not you like guys right just there. End up standing there together, all three I, of you. I'll stand back, like further okay. away. I'm just gonna look at uh, Gisla earnestly and be like, "Thanks, Gisla." I I would have um, I would have stayed. But I would be silent and I would say nothing. And I would just be uh, trying to look menacing behind uh, Kalora. Okay. Gisa? Does the author know our names? Does the author know your names? I can't think of why he would. I have Did you tell him? No. Insight check. Make an insight check. Uh, 24. Good shit. She's being mostly honest. You can tell she's hiding something, but you don't know quite what it is. You don't get the sense that what she told you was a lie. You're not a very nice person. Why, thank you, dear. I hope that ring gets you in lots of places that you didn't get in before. <laughs> You're so sweet. Shut up. 
Okay. She kind of gives a wave to Clarabold as he kind of looks intimidating behind. I look up at Clarabold and I say, I hate her. Wink at her. Drink her potions. <laughs> <laughs> Love potions. <laughs> Everybody walks away? Yeah, I don't. Well, yep, I trail behind as they start going. Okay. I'll just leave. Alright. The rising hand, now free from the clutches of the Thieves' Guild, at least in the very terms of this contract, which you had signed in blood, walk away from the headquarters of the Thieves' Guild here in Mightside and make their way back to their erstwhile home. He might side in. Yes! Free from these clutches, everyone, the day is yours. What would you like to do? What time is it? It is noon. noon. I'm going to go get a drink from Cosmos. Like I said, I'm going to need some coin because I'm broke. I got you. I got you, man. All right. I would like to drink. I assume we go back to the bar and tell everybody what happened. <laughs> tell Cosmos what happened to me? Yeah. yeah, we'll even tell Cosmos. Oh, Kazi. We'll thank him for his oil. Gang shit. Dude. He's very pleased that the oil worked. Um, almost like he's like proud of himself for thinking of it. Um, a dr drinks on the house tonight, everyone. How about that? Thank That's you. fantastic. Our I look, not broke anyways. Have, I'm just gonna say that shit. <laughs> so we, we, not used to having money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever have any need for money. I uh, fist bump Hezrian. Yeah. Whatever. So hang out at the Might Side Inn for a while, having a few drinks, relaxing. A, a large weight having come off of your shoulders. Um you all feel a little bit better about your circumstances, a bit better about your place in this world, though you may be strangers here, you're no longer in immediate danger, so you're feeling pretty good. Um, can I get a chance to go over to Core? Sure. And, um, Core, where are you sitting? I've got the map up if you guys want to read it up. Matt, can you move your mic a little bit closer to your mouth? Just a little bit? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I... Very excited. Probably be sitting... I don't I don't know. Next to Brad, probably. Okay, well, I'm just going to come over to you and kind of um, beckon you away from the bar to talk over, like, in the corner here or something. Okay, sorry, my roll twenty is being slow, so I don't know where I am I'll on the map. Well, anyway, I'll I'll beckon him over to go talk in the corner. Okay. And uh, this is kind of like whispering to you. Um, what are we going to do about the rest of the people on the list of names? I. You said don't Clara, know. Bold, and Tito are also on there still, right? Um, yep. We'll have I, to figure it, we'll have to figure that out at a later time. Maybe. So they took your name off and my name, right? Yep. Yeah. We'll have to talk to them about maybe what they might want to do. The rest of the group as well. How we want to go about that. Since you know the most about it, that's why I came to you first. Well, it's... I knocked out my two missions pretty easily and managed to only break one pinky toe. So, I don't know. I mean, definitely if we do it, we have to tell everybody, but... Something, something to think don't about. I think he's was so bad. But I'm a different person. So. Well, let's have our celebrations today, and then we'll talk about it more later. Okay. And I'll walk back over to my seat. Okay. 
big deal, so many conversations they wanted. I'm just, you know, chill next to Hezrian, kind of getting the lowdown about things, and, you know, just be like, yeah, great job, and all that shit. And then, um, probably talking to Logan about, you know, the stuff that we've accomplished and things we need to accomplish. Okay. Obviously, it's not like a hidden conversation. We're just like, okay, well, we need to do this and this and this. Yeah. I'm like more on the like the edge of the bar, kind of secluding myself, just chilling, drinking, drinking my sorrows away. Laura is also secluding herself at the back table. Yeah, I'm talking to Zapper about everything that happened, and you know, Flex, of course, giving like an ex exaggerated story like hey man these niggas was this big it was crazy we all fucking died they were 30 feet tall <laughs> that but don't listen to a word he's saying they were throwing columns at us 50 of these 30 foot niggas it was wow bro but now i was like hey i appreciate everything you did though i hit guidance also zaffa there's probably only one person that he had to fight let's be real Hey, don't listen to her. That's all lies, bro. You know that would have your back. <laughs> I mean, you know I can read people better than you can, Lex. He's telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but if you think logically, you think the three of them could take on 50 big size. What's the word you use, Hezrian? Uh, stone Let's, warriors is what I said. Know <laughs> <laughs> Just letting you know. You know what god he follows though, right? He had it in the bag. Oh, uh, yep, Onata. Mm -hmm. Good old Onata. Oni. Don't call him Oni. That's not his name. Oh, Oni. <sighs> he sounds like a great guy. Shut up, Lexi. <laughs> Alright. So, yeah, uh, that's all I'm doing. I don't know if anyone else is doing anything. Um, I will... Hold on, I know what I'm gonna do. Where's the stupid texty thingy? There it is. I'm gonna go over to Kalora eventually. Okay. When Slex does her thing. Brad's making con saves. That's good. <laughs> oh, I, I'm drinking at con save level right now, by the way. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, Tito's drunk already. <laughs> Very I'm sad um, at, at certain points about his liar. Like, he gets drunk and then gets a little bit weepy about it. Uh, da, da. Matt, Matt, 20. I'm going to leave. Okay. No, bye. No. And go to uh, the shops. I'll message you. Okay. Sounds good. Matt, I got a 20. All right. Not a nat. Got 30. Michael, be sure to message me in Roll20, don't text me. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. All right. Why did Melody roll a three? What do I do? Slash W? W and then GM. That was Tito's con save. Oh. Why you gotta be like that? Uh, 
Hey, Lex. Huh? Yep. I got your message. Cool. Cool. Okay. Uh, Zaffir, make a perception check. Okay. Oh, I should have just rolled here. Oh, well. Uh, 12 plus uh, 18. Okay, cool. Well, I'll message you back. Tito, is your uh, might side in a uh, hooker there? <laughs> is is she? <laughs> nope. Good. I don't think he ever paid for her. What you say, Nark Nark? I said I don't think you ever paid for her. Did you? You wow, use your like dashing you charms. Nark Nark now. Ha. Well, I, Lex didn't actually I've, make that comment, I've, I've, by the way. I've, oh, you didn't? Oh. No. Yeah, Lex and Zephyr left. Uh oh. Separately, oh. mind you. Separately. Sure. I mean, Never Lex mind and Zaff you. got something on the side, but, you know, we don't advertise it. And they left exactly five minutes apart. Exactly. I'll go over to talk to Kalora. Okay, go for it. You all did it. Yep. I'm glad you all made it out uns unscathed as you did. Yeah, it was pretty crazy down there. I almost died. Yes, Tito, I'm glad you made it back. My life. I missed you very I much. Died, though. What? My liar died. Oh, that is quite a shame. Like I said, Tito, we'll get you a new one. There's no replacing that liar. Okay. Tito, are you ready for tomorrow? What, the trial? Are you more ready? I certainly oh. am. If I don't get in, I'm breaking in. I'm going to be very upset with myself if I don't make it again. But we'll see how it goes. Like I told us, big, big stone giant thing, Gollum, today, to get away from me, and she disintegrated. Wow. Yeah. Hopefully you go against Gollum's in the trials. No, hopefully not. <laughs> I would die. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank the, the Lord. Thank gods all the gods especially the one i imitated that the floor and her were there to save me but would i have heard him say that <gasps> oh you would yeah he's he's drunk he would have been saying that like saying saying that tito what god did you imitate uh i don't know no you bro you're drunk yeah, can I inside check that? But I don't know what. Do I know what God is there in that church? They were saying stuff, yeah, weren't they? They yeah. have talked about it in your presence. Oh. What's it called again? Il Mater. Il Mater. Il Mater. Uh, Il -mater. <laughs> you. And there's that one church over there with that one dude that we like. We like snuck in for some reason, even though it's a church. And when we were invisibling out, I was like, hi. And they all thought it was me. Tito, that's wrong. You should never do anything like that. Oh. Well. Do it late now. Uh, I'm walking over. And I'm going to grab Tito. Okay. And I'm walking to the church with Tito. Oh. <gasps> Wait. Uh, Can I resist? I, I look over my shoulder and I shrug. Because <laughs> I, I, I let it happen. Because I remember that. <laughs> I, I am absolutely 
enraged. Enraged? Are you? I'm sorry. Yeah, can we I roleplay this? I say nothing. I just grab it. Was it. A, it was an innocent prank. That's what I do. Okay. So and that's you the get way of my people. Making your way towards the church, Tito talking to you. You can continue to try to convince him if you want, but please keep making excuses. Make decision if he, uh, uh, I hold him with one hand. Mm -hmm. I open the door. I throw him into the church. Yosef is there. Uh, Theribold? What's going on? Tell the man, Tito. Tell him what? <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about, sir, but can you please excuse us? He's I'm, I've been drinking, and he just picked me up and threw me in here. I don't even know who he is. Yosef, does his voice sound familiar to you? Um... No, because I changed my voice with actor. I can't say it does. Tito, please tell the truth. <laughs> what's going on? Just tell me what's happening. I feel uncomfortable. I have to pee. Terrible. Can I go pee? Clarabal, can I go pee? I think he may have impersonated Ilmato the other night. No. He's what you heard. Well, what if he doesn't, you can tell he doesn't really want to believe that. What, what proof do you have of this? He, he told you this? He was drunk in a bar boasting about how he impersonated a god in this church. How would he know about that? Fake news. He looks positively <laughs> crestfallen when you say this. Like, the air just deflates out of him. I think he's trying to pose me. That's disappointing. It was the first, uh... Ah, never mind. I'm sorry, Yosef. It's fine, um... That doesn't mean you're... What you do is any less important, or any less powerful. I know, I know. Elmeter, he's never spoken to me. Okay. He's never spoken to anybody. And he would forgive. He would. Tito, you can leave. Okay, well, now that you're telling me to leave, I want to stay. So, let me defend myself real quick. <clears throat> I just want to say that, you know, you see me, I'm short, I'm a gnome, I'm pretty young, all right? I do some stupid crap. But also, the gnome people as a culture and society, you know, their god, I don't really follow him that much, but his his ideas are ingrained in our culture from the beginning of my birth age. And so I kind of picked up on it, and, you know, he likes jokes. Please leave. I just back out. <laughs> Thank you for, for bringing him here, Terrible. I, I would have liked to hear it from him. I'm very sorry, Yosef. It's all right. It's, it's better that I know, certainly. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to go take some time for some quiet prayer in my office, if you care to join me. No obligation, of course. I will. You guys head back to his office and begin spending some time in quiet reflection and prayer to El Mater. Meanwhile, Tito, you have just exited a church, drunk, after being asked to leave. What would you like to do? Uh, what, me? I'm drunk and I just left the church. Yep. You just go back to the inn, or? Uh. I walk around the city. I'm just exploring. I don't need to, like, I'm just walking around. Okay. I'm not, like, taking a break. 
Okay, sounds good. I'll head Lex. back after like a, like an hour. Perfect, sounds good. Lex, uh, after a little while, um, you get back to the, the hey, right side in with hey, your purchase in hand. Matt, she's DC'd. Oh, yeah, she is. Yeah, her and Josh are DC'd. Oh, we need her. Unless you guys have any conversation you'd like to have in the next, like, our Wi Fi is fucked up. They're, uh, they're logging back on right now. Okay. There she is. Lex, you get back to the Might Side Inn uh, about 15, 20 minutes after uh, Tito and uh, Clarabold leave. So you get back and Tito and Clarabold are gone. You didn't see them leave or anything, so you're not sure what's going on there. I'm looking around. Where the fuck is this fucking gnome? Like, I know he's short, and I'm kind of like peering over, not seeing anything. Um, who would be the first person I see in our from our group? Uh, any one of them. I mean, they're all there. All right. Uh, Logan, where Tito go? Um, I think Clarable took him somewhere. I saw them. Him take him out. But where? Uh, no clue. Oh, fucking a. I okay. Didn't know. Um, whatevs. Um, and then I go upstairs. Okay. And why I had to exit out of everything? I, this is just so fucking stupid. Ben, remember that one time you had shitty Wi-Fi? Hey, guess what? We do too. We don't have shitty Wi-Fi. It just sucks right now. I was about to say, y'all are on that 1.34 download speed uh, Ben's got. <laughs> yeah, at least we pay for 600. We usually get about 200. <laughs> oh, I, thought you, I thought you meant 2.0. <laughs> Okay, roll 20 is finally letting me on, maybe, possibly, yes. All right, message to you. Okay. Sounds good. Zaffir, you arrive back like 10 minutes after Lex does with your purchase. Purchases, sorry. I mean, what you want to do? Zephyr, did you hear him? I heard my name. I didn't hear anything else. He oh, said okay. you arrived you with your back, purchases. Like 10 minutes after oh, Lex okay. does. Uh, um, Tito is still not back. Okay, I'm actually going to go up to my room, um, trying to hide. Um, You're breaking up a bit, Michael. I'm going to cast uh, Cat's Grace on myself. Invincibility, okay. Cat's Grace. Sure. Um, and. Let me whisper you what I'm doing. All right. And then I would have gone back downstairs to see her where. Okay. Bed. <laughs> All right, Matt, I'm gonna message to you. Do Cosmos have wine, Matt? Yeah. What kind of wine does he have? Um, I've got red, uh, white, a uh, little bit in between, some with bubbles. Whatever you like. Can I have the bubbly, please? Of course, absolutely. He, uh, takes a bottle out, pours you some of the uh, the bubbly, and actually puts a cherry in it for you and hands it over. Can I have two cherries? <laughs> of course. 
<laughs> I will I will take some red wine, I think. Sounds good. Grabs a glass, pours it a little bit heavy, and hands it over to you. Take a little sippy sip. Yeah, make a... Uh, do the... the uh, I, I did roll. I rolled the natural 20, actually. Fuck yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, it looks fantastic. Um, it's carved with intricate details. Um, you've got musical notes kind of decorating the, the border around it. All kinds of incredible uh, detail. It looks great. And then I'm going to go um, put it in Tito's room. Okay. You open the door, and laying on the bed, you see a liar. Uh, a silver liar. Um, looks to be elven made, uh, quite fine. Um, freshly strung and polished. It's beautiful. It looks like uh, very pale wood with silver flecks almost in it. What the fuck? Okay, I'm just going to leave it on the bed. Okay. And I'm going to walk downstairs. And whoever I see first, um, like, so Tito said he left, he lost his liar. He left it upstairs in his room. As I'm sipping my drink. Interesting. <laughs> Sounds like that little gnome. I'm just going to have a drink. Okay. You guys continue drinking for a little while unless there's anything else you guys want to do. I just um, have a meeting at five. That's all I know. Right. I've just been reading that uh, Dwarven book. Okay. Understood. Oh, does Logan seem drunk? Did Logan make a check? I don't think Logan was drinking heavily. Oh. Not like heavily. Just that a bit. Tito. <laughs> Alright, Logan, back to the drawing board. Literally. Alright. Let's find a table. Clear out. Right. Pull out my bag. Take out the paper. Okay, so you guys watch as Get back to it. and Logan pull out a big sheet of paper that they've kind of like glued together and it's got a rough drawing in the corner that you can't quite make out. Um, but Logan, Lex is like talking to Logan, explaining things, what they look like, and uh, Logan is drawing. You guys can't really make it out because they're at a table by themselves, but if you wanted to investigate, you can go back in. I uh, take my drink and I go up to a room. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish my drink and I'm gonna just pretty much gonna probably go meditate until the next day, so I can thinking about the trials tomorrow. Okay. Clearbold. After about 30 minutes or so, you uh, finish up with Yosef. Um, he thanks you for coming by again and thanks you for your for doing what you did. Um, and you guys say goodbye. Okay. Um, I'm heading to Oceans of Potions. Okay. You exit the, the church and make your way. Um, the short distance, relatively, to uh, potion, Oceans of Potions, where Gisela is uh, standing, polishing bottles in front of the cart. Is anybody else around, or is it just Gisela? She doesn't have any shoppers right now. Uh, people, like, you guys have not seen a lot of people shopping at Oceans of Potions. There are people, there are people in the bazaar. It's pretty busy at this time of day. But nobody is really around Gisela. Uh, I will walk up very close uh, to Gisla. She kind of turns as you get close. Ah. Welcome. Uh, I came here to let you know the innocent in this city are now under my protection. If you... If the Thieves Guild takes any action, causes a family to go hungry, um, you extort money from somebody who rightfully shouldn't pay. You blackmail somebody who doesn't deserve it. Or you just do anything I don't like. And at this point, um, I will take a dagger out and I will grasp it hard so it cuts into my hand and I'll slowly pull it out. I will say I will hold you personally, you, personally responsible 
for every instance that I deem fit. That's it. And I'll head back to the bar. Intimidation to check with advantage. Good luck, Bearable Fool. I, as I leave, I will take my hand, my bloody hand, and I will drag it against the side of her cart. And I'll just head back to the bar at this point. She just watches you go. Okay. Yo, you gotta roll a splinter check. That shit probably hurt. Yeah. <laughs> splinter check, what is that? Cool. So and an infection um, check. I I go acrobatics. See if I get a splinter. Acrobatics for splinters. Ooh. Oof. Yeah, yeah you got some splinters. splinters. Yep. Um, Tito, after drunkenly wandering the city for another probably thirty minutes or so after Clarible's little incident here, you make your way back to the Might Side Inn, open the door, and your friends are still there, drinking, carousing, having fun. At least for the most part, some of them have gone up to their rooms. Tito? He's right here. Sorry, I was standing for a second. It's okay. It's okay. You just made your way back to the, the inn after drunkenly wandering some more. Um, I just silently go to my room. Okay. You guys watch as dejected. If I see him come in. Yeah. Zapper would say, Tito, you are so dumb. You didn't even take your liar with you. It is on your bed. What are you talking about? Well, I went to get you a new liar, but I went to your room to put it there, and it's in your bed. You left it at home. I go up to, I like run to my room and look. Okay, you run upstairs. Bed. I'll just sit back first. Down. What does he see, Lex, the first one? He sees... Um, a pale wood lyre with a silver sheen. Um, and it's distinctively uh, elven because it's very finely made. And thin. It's got like a thin, very uh, graceful neck. Almost reminds you of something avian. Um, and then Zapper, what else does he see? You also find a red wire with an intriguing and strange shape. It looks to have been made by a tiefling craftsman, and it has a flame motif in some places. Also intricately carved in the back is your name, Tito Tilly. I say, you guys! You don't know Lex did anything. And also, we're not... Well, I say you guys, like, oh my gosh, I, there's two liars there all of a sudden. I grab both of them and come back down, and I'm like, neither of these are my liars, but how did anyone know how these got here? I mean, I got the red one. What? Did you drunkenly purchase one? Uh... I don't think so. Huh. Well, now I have two. I think the silver one's a little better than the red. What do you think, Logan? I think those are both pretty cool. These are both Where'd awesome. Where'd you get them, Tito? My room. I don't know. I think the red one has his name written all over it. So. Yeah. Thank you so much. Is it just like... Regular old liar and my in equipment. Yeah, Add. you can customize them with the descriptions, but they are just liars. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm gonna use both of them. Huh. I just feel like the red one just isn't as great. Huh. <laughs> How about this? Alex, did you, did you do the one. silver one? Oh, I did your name. Spells. 
and the red one for red feeling spells and and or songs. I didn't get him alive. Insight check. Yeah, make an insight check. Yeah, where did this blue one come from? You mean the silver one? <laughs> <laughs> silver. I have blue in my mind for some reason. Uh, move the. Move the... I'm doing thing. deception, right? If you're lying. <laughs> That would make me a liar. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Let's roll this. Alright. You can watch. No! Yep, you believe her. <laughs> Wait, what was the total? 25. I rolled a 25. Yeah, but I got that 20. But I met, I met the DC. DM's decision, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna give that to the nat 20. That's fair. Yeah. Dang. See, so I can't believe you, like, left that in your room. Are you sure you didn't leave your Cedo? <laughs> I promise you, I took mine at the hole, Logan! Maybe it was a gift from that, uh, that woman you, you fancied. Oh, that's probably hmm. it. The... I feel like I she might have so. bought the yeah, one I, mean, I got. I also don't remember her name. I look at Logan. And I'm just shaking my head. Well, so so no one knows where the silver one came from? Your bed. Your, you already what said. if it's cursed? Clearly your bed just generates liars. Well, yep. okay, there might be another one. Okay. I go and check. <laughs> okay. You go upstairs, and there are two liars laying on your bed. <laughs> a red one and a silver one. But they're in my hands. Oh, never mind. There are four now. I thought you were making a joke about his bed generating liars. Yeah. No. Sorry. I um, turned to oh sorry. You guys watch as uh as like you guys are having this little bit of fun with uh with Tito. Clara Bold walks in the front door looking very upset, I'll just say. Uh he can give us a better description of how he looks. Clara Bold. Uh he looks um distraught and um disappointed. And um not very sociable at all. Um, I will grab a drink and uh, I sit kind of away from everyone, just drinking and uh, thinking. I turn to Logan. Have you noticed that these people, we accomplished something apparently today. I mean, you and I definitely did. Oh, yeah. They seem to have. And they seem very solemn. Yes, I do. Maybe they're tired? Maybe. Clarable didn't go down there. Yeah. And Hezrin, he looks fine. Nods over to Hezrin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let's reach your own. We gotta. Keep going with this thing. Maybe we'll figure it out in the morning. It's noon. Oh, I know it's one. Oh, oh wait, I can still make um, the enchanting class. <laughs> well, yep. Well, when I come back downstairs and I see Claire Bold is back, I get embarrassed again and go back up to my room. Okay. Does Tito look, um, does he still, like, look, uh, wary after the battle? Need healing? Anything like that? Does he look perfectly fine or is he alright? Andrew? I mean, I'm, like, negative four fine. Negative four fine. Pretty much fine. He's got, like, a bruise or two. Okay. 
Uh, I could only just heal myself up. I heal myself up full. <laughs> okay. Healing word myself. I'll, uh, Tito I'll... notices you looking at him as he's like turning to look up the stairs and quickly heals himself. I'll um I'll walk towards Tito this time, not aggressively. Like I'm not angry like before. Okay. Tito, do you let him, do you stop running away from him and let him approach you, or do you continue to? Um. Uh, I kind of still just go off to my room. With my head he's down. Still walking away from you, Claire Bolton. You can probably pretty easy, easily catch up, catch up with him if you wanted to. I um, I see him go in his room, and I'll just walk away. Okay. Did we see this happen? Sorry, I have no idea exactly what happened. Why is I? Um, they were just uh, Claire Bolton was walking towards Tito, basically, is all you would have seen, and then ah. turned around. I look over at a. Uh, Logan, I think there might be like some sort of lover's quarrel there. <laughs> yeah, they don't. <laughs> That's gonna be interesting. He knows that's a little scared. A clairvoyant? Something. Hmm. Didn't seem like you wanted to speak to him. Oh well. Figure it out. Interesting, interesting. Now I'll just go back to the lawn. Okay. Hey, yo, Claire Ball, do you want to come over here? Sorry, I was muted. Um, where are you guys sitting? Is this at a accurate? Table. At a table. I will move them. Sorry. Yeah, I haven't even looked at that because that thing never works. There you go. So there I you will. Go. I will walk over with my drink. Okay. Kind of slumped at this point. I'm not like standing upright. Um, Are you drunk? Uh, not really. Oh, you just seem... Eh, out of sorts, I suppose. Yeah, I've had, uh... I've had a couple moments today. Did you go down in that thing that everyone else did? Nope. Wasn't there. What the fuck did Tito do? Nope. He looks scared. He's fine. Tito's fine. He was doing Tito things. Yeah, he's definitely drunk, so he'll be fine. He'll just, you know, add it up to that. He's, a, he's okay. Also, what do you think about our drawing here? Do you like it? Clearable, you look down, and they have gotten a very small portion of what appears to be a map done. Right now, they've got the compass and the, uh, like, a part of a bit of shoreline completed. I did send that. Melody a copy of it. Okay. This is amazing. Is this what you guys did today? Yeah, it's what we've been working on all day. My oh. direction, her skill. My drawing and erasing. I, you guys make quite a combo. Thank you. We're lucky to have you around. You too. What's it gonna be? A map of the world, current the whole, time. The whole world? Yeah. I wow. saw it back at the library. Oh. Lex has wow. great memory. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you need me to, anybody to remember anything, I got you. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Yeah, so you can chill here if you want, but just start. I'd show up our impressive skills here. Yeah, it's, it's very cool. No, it's, it's, a, it's an awesome map. I can't wait to see it when it's finished. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> and we go back to drawing. Okay. 
I go back to drinking. All right. So in the next couple hours, does anybody have anything else they would like to accomplish or discuss? I don't know how far I am through this book, but <laughs> I'm going to keep reading the book. Okay. You're getting, you're getting really through it, so I need to do some work about that. Okay. I, I, it could just be some dwarven fiction, but I... Yeah. I'm but I, I am going to come up with something for it, and it will be interesting. I promise. Okay. I just keep forgetting to do it. It's all yeah, good. Go to probably like finishing it. I would think. Yeah, I would think so too. Yeah. Zapper, you said you're going to the class. To the class. He's gonna. He said he was yeah, going to go go the class, right? Yeah, I'm gonna hang out in my room until the class. Okay. Sounds good. Well, guys, we're going to end the session there. As you guys. Enjoy a an evening after a victory, though it may be bittersweet or even sour to some of you. Um, and we'll pick up there next week. Good job, guys. Woo! Level up. Yay. Melody, I thank you for being my partner today. <laughs> yeah. And not risking our lives. Good job, guys. Take the time at some good. point during this week would for me to level up your characters. Yes. <gasps> oh. 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 It's and our I'm... art melody. That's how I did it. I did it. I can go level up this time. You do? Oh, wait. wait. 20 charisma, I think. I think I'm getting 20 charisma. I'm leveling up right now. I think I just get like two spells. <laughs> Hell yeah. Max out charisma. I'm as charismatic as possible. Which part should I do? Your boy just got Circle of the Moon. Let's go. Hell yeah. I see you, I see you big homie. Hmm. Yeah, All good. right, time to multi class into either a cleric or a druid. Haven't decided. <laughs> What? Why can't I leave Wait, maybe wizard. Multi class into a barbarian. Mm -hmm. I'm multi class and cleric. For sure. Good idea. I'm just Can I multi class NPC? Oh. <laughs> multi class Baron? I I think multi -class Baron. But then I'm going to be even again. Yeah, but you want to be because every even number above 10, you get a bonus. You want because if you're at like. <laughs> So if you're at 13, it's the same as being at 12, you know? You got this, Mel. Can I just add two to my desk? <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what to do to make the character better. It's so freaking even. Enjoy. Yeah. All right, guys. Signing off. Right, I'll yeah. look at your character sheets later. Yeah, Matt. You'll have to let me know what I can wild ship into. Yeah, we'll do. Cool. these nuts. <laughs> 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 All right, bye.